102 Springfield Classic Rock. It's 535. And uh, I'm Rock 102. It's... Wait, wait you didn't... The uh, Max and Nagel show? Uh... No, I just had to remember where I was working. Uh, my goodness, I got new headphones on today? Yeah. It's like I'm here in the world for the first time. They're very slimming. They are very slimming. Yeah. I need to get those giant ear, uh, Mickey Mouse earmuffs off. <laughs> they were They were huge. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be sunny today with a high of 68 tomorrow. Uh, more of the same. It's 45 right now in downtown Springfield. You know, if you're going to commit yourself to listening to this show on a podcast, you should know that it's brought to you by Marcotte Ford. They got your back for sales, service, parts, and rentals. Marcotte Ford in Holyoke. Marty Caproni is going to be here. Apparently, it's some sort of comedy show going on tomorrow night. I don't know uh, what that is. Well... You better, since you're going to be there. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm headlining the show. So we'll be uh, talking about that in the Mayflower Marathon Comedy Night, which is coming up in a few weeks, and uh, other stuff, too. All right. Plus the keyword to cash. Oh, that thing, too. 536 and Rock 102. Here comes the money. It feels classic rock. It's 552 and ZZ Top with Dax and Nagel and Rock 102. Going to be sunny today with a high of 68. Tomorrow, more of the same. It's 45 right now in downtown Springfield. Hollywood Trash is brought to you by Aqua Pump, an expert in all water supply systems from the well to the pump and into the house. Somehow you still care about what's happening in Hollywood. So from Tinseltown, 3,000 miles away, it's Steve Nagel's Hollywood Trash. Seinfeld had one of the most controversial finales in the history of television, and if you didn't like it, Here's some interesting news for you. At the end of a stand-up gig in Boston over the weekend, Jerry did a Q&A. And someone asked him if he was happy with the way the show ended, and he dropped this bombshell. Are you ready? I'm ready. I have a little secret about the ending. What's the deal with TV? No, he didn't say that. Have you seen these things? He said something is going to happen that has to do with the ending hasn't happened yet. And just what what, what you are thinking about, Larry David... And I have also been thinking about it. So we'll, you'll see and we'll see. All right, that's pretty cryptic. Not specific enough. That means he's got nothing. <laughs> what well, so the show is based on. Yeah, but, you, but you're, you're trying to show cards that you don't have. There's no, there's no idea in the way yeah. it works. You know, I think uh, the most disappointing thing about the, uh, the first finale mm-hmm. was at the end of it, they're playing. They're they're showing all these uh, like a montage of photographs to that god awful song from Green Day. Mm-hmm. I hate that. song. Ugh. I'm glad we got that removed from the Rock 102 Morning Show playlist, dude. I want to high five you every day. Well, hey, that and that scar tissue song. Oh yeah, I better dump that for later. Uh, that's not on the list. Or do you have to do that? Did they tell you to do that so I wouldn't be upset about it? <laughs> Ariana Grande will give her estranged husband Dalton Gomez a one-time payment of $1.25 million, but no spousal support. Oh man. You mean I only get a million of $1.2 million? He'll find a way to make it stretch. Also, they're they're bar- they're all both barred from speaking publicly about their marriage. Alright then. Alright, well there you go. Amber Heard told her therapist that Jason Momoa showed up drunk on the set of Aquaman 2 and dressed like Johnny Depp just to upset her. Yeah, I've heard her tell lies before. He uh, supposedly didn't want her in the sequel. Well, probably a lot of people didn't want you in the sequel, but we already signed this deal before we found out what you do in the bed at night. (laughs) You dirty girl. Listen, either get this film, yeah. or I'm going to go to your hotel room and cause a big problem on the bed. Yeah. You either get this film, or I'm getting you some flushable wipes. Because <laughs> it sounds like you need it. Uh, it's let's the see. box office, or the boom boom. Someone on Reddit asked users what actors uh, lack on-screen chemistry with their co-stars. Sometimes it's one-sided, other times it's mutually awkward. Here's some highlights. The Rock with Emily Blunt in Jungle Cruise. I didn't see it. I didn't see it either. But apparently there's no... uh, Did you see Avengers Age of Ultron? Uh, No. No, then you're not getting that. I probably probably pronounced that wrong. How about uh, The Matrix? I did see The Matrix. So Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss. The chemistry, not there. He's not a guy who uh, brings a lot of chemistry to the table. Well, same for the next one. J-Lo and Owen Wilson in Marry Me. Owen Wilson, I think, is one of the worst actors ever. 
because he just talks like this all the time. It's almost like a Caitlyn Jenner kind of thing. But it's much higher pitch. Yeah. yeah. I wonder why that is. Uh-huh. Well, well, what I'm trying to say... <laughs> uh, and Daniel Radcliffe and Bonnie Wright in the Harry Potter movies. I don't know which one she was. Bonnie was Wright? Yeah. Uh, Natalie Portman and Chris Hemsworth. Natalie, uh, or uh, Anne Hathaway and Christian Bale in The Dark Knight Rises. There really wasn't a lot of chemistry there, even though they tried to make that like a love story. Right. Didn't work. And Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sharon Stone in Total Recall. Uh, Bonnie Wright played uh, Ginny Weasley. No, no, no. She sang something to talk about when no, Dennis no. Quaid was in the music video back in the 80s. No, 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 Steve. You're thinking about Bonnie Wright. Yeah. I'm thinking of... Uh, that band that uh, Eric Clapton played for for a little while. Uh, Bonnie and Delaney. What? Bonnie and Delaney. Bon- I have no idea. I never heard of that before. Really? Yeah. Well, I forgot about it. I forgot I even mentioned it. Yeah, you came to a full stop right there. See? I think that should be With an be Eric the- Clapton reference. I mean, you would think that'd have a little bit more push. Well, what's that jerk that Mark from West Springfield used to tell? What's the difference between a, a, a baby and a bag of cocaine? <laughs> Eric Cocaine wouldn't let a bag of... <laughs> Eric Clapton wouldn't let a bag of cocaine fall out of a window. That's a horrible story, but... Uh, and, a, and a horrible delivery. Yeah, well, hey, you know what? That's why we have Mark from West Springfield doing it, because he's so much better at delivery. Where is that guy? I haven't I seen him. Yeah. I think he might be caught up in some legal issues in the federal court system. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Uh, we always think of Swifties as happy, well-adjusted people. Well, maybe it's time to reevaluate that. According to a poll of 2,000 young people aged 14 to 25, Taylor Swift is the artist who has the most positive impact on mood and well-being, and Ed Sheeran is a close number two. But check this out. Nearly two-thirds of those polled say they shared a, say that a shared appreciation of artists through dedicated fan bases also has a positive influence. In other words, being a Swiftie is good for your mental health. I've always thought so. It's turned me around. Well, it's definitely good for Travis Kelsey's mental health and sexual health. If you don't yeah, know what I'm talking about. Mike Shinoda from uh, Lincoln Park says they're the first band to ever prank Metallica. At the end of Metallica's 2003 tour, Lincoln Park crashed their performance and set up a picnic with Chester Bennington riding his skateboard. Oh, that's great. Oh, man, that was so fun. You know, like, you, you have this perception of these bands are supposed to be hard rockers and, yeah, and yeah, down with the men, and they're really just a bunch of idiots and musical instruments. Ultimately, that's true. Yeah. They're they're, not, they're, 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 uh, there's nothing terribly special on any of them. They're just normal human beings who just have weird jobs. Right. Uh, and let's see. Uh, oh, Kim Kardashian. You ready for this one? Yes. She recently had a wardrobe malfunction when her latex pants ripped open, exposing her bottom. No kidding. Yeah. She must have something to say. Oh, my God. The last time I had something rip open, exposing this much flesh was when Ray J stuffed the trouser snout into the vagipotamus in that sex tape you can purchase on YouPorn for $39.95. Uh, Caitlin? I never got that done and do with your mother, Chris Kim, but I once went Rolex deep in the raw bar. <laughs> I plundered the panty wookie like the janitor at the Golden Corral. <laughs> what are you trying to say? What I'm trying to say is I was speed bagging the love bean like Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> and then she exploded like a six pack of Schlitz spiked by Gronkowski. <laughs> I didn't realize. He's nuts! I didn't realize it was going to be a part two oh, to yeah. part three. Well, there's it's sequels. It's sequels. It's sequels. <laughs> The other part is coming as well. Right. Oh, yeah. And that's your Hollywood trash on Rock 102. Oh, yeah. Come see what all the parking is about. Beat, win, Rome, and win big at Gary Rome Hyundai. With Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It is uh, going to be uh, cool today uh, with a high of 68. Tomorrow, more of the same. It's 45 right now in downtown Springfield. Uh, Marty Caproni will be joining us later on this morning. There's uh, apparently a comedy show going on uh, tomorrow night that uh, might be of interest. I have never heard of that at all. Uh, apparently, there's a $20 buffet attached to it. What? Yeah, I know. Yeah, first time I'm hearing about Me, this I thing. didn't think these things were possible. Who's playing there tomorrow night? Some uh, some hack. Some hack. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm not a prop comic. No, no. Yeah. You're, Where's you're, my you're, water gun? 
You're worse. You're a you're a guitar act. Yeah, I uh, I, w- I was uh, reading this thing on Twenty Two. They've been doing this whole thing with Cy Becker, obviously, because he was such a. I mean, he was a, he was an icon to the area. If you really think about it, yeah. he, he was unique to Western Massachusetts. You know what I mean? He there are plenty of other markets around the country that have something like him, but he was unique to us. He was he was unique yeah. to us, and when you combine. You know what people have uh, grown up with between like mm-hmm. John Quill yeah. and then a Cy Becker. Yeah, yeah, you know, these are like a, you know, like a, a a lost generation of fine fine broadcasters. Yeah, the uh, yeah he spent many years over at uh, WSPR in Springfield. Yes, which is now a Spanish station. So now if you go over there, they say, "Do you know Cy? C Cy 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 C C." So so I'm reading this. <laughs> so C Cy so. What was that from? That was wasn't it? Uh, it's a Three Stooges thing. Was it a Three Stooges? I thought it was. Um, I thought it was Mel Blanc in the. He was like in Mexico. Oh he was yeah, Poncho. I'm thinking See? of the uh, the old uh, alphabet song from the Three Stooges. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah. So yeah, but I was thinking more of that Mel Blanc thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, here's the story from 22. After the passing of our dear friend and reporter Cy Becker, it's time to take a look back at some of the top stories he reported on this year. Cy Becker had a 60-year broadcast career spanning radio, TV, and the Internet, and was well-known for his energy, unmistakable voice, and, of course, his movie reviews. He joined uh, 22 News in 1979 as a general assignment reporter and as a local theater and movie critic. He retired this past spring, finishing a career that won't soon be forgotten by his friends at 22 and his many fans across western Massachusetts. Cy's enduring legacy will be uh, always be his movie reviews, as he saw over 9,000 movies in his lifetime. 9,000. Imagine what that would have cost how by much, today's standards. How much do you think the average person sees in their lifetime? 9,000? Nowhere close. 1,000? Uh, maybe a tenth of that? Yeah, maybe. Maybe a couple hundred? Well, how many movies do you think you've seen? In the theater? I don't, I don't know. Maybe a, a couple hundred. I, I, but nowhere near 9,000. Now, I'm not I, – I, listen, this is not a, a, a crap on Cy Becker thing. Hell no. But do you think at some point – because, like, we interview authors sometimes. Sure. We don't read the book, but we get synopsis Yeah, but to from, do a but to do a review, yeah. to say something is either good or bad, Yeah, you kind of have to see the film in order to have any credibility. I don't and know. And Cy always saw the film. I can tell you what Titanic was about without even telling you, without even watching a, a, a scene at all, like a, right. a screenshot. Yeah, the boat sinks at the end. Yeah. But, you know, but was it a good movie leading up to that? Uh, well, I would imagine it would be. The love story was uh, was unnecessary, but uh, I just want to see the damn thing sink. I just, I, I usually base my, uh, my, a judgment of a movie based on how many people go to it first. You first, and then I'll follow if it's really good. <laughs> if I have at least five corroborating people saying it's a yeah. good movie, I'll go. It was like the the worst movie I saw was uh, what the hell was that? It was Matthew McConaughey? It was recently. It was in the last like five or six years. Right. I think it was called Beach Bum. And he plays like this like author who's uh, just. Uh, high and drunk all the time right and it was it was just it didn't go anywhere it just didn't feel like this it was the stupidest movie i've ever seen because it didn't feel it didn't feel like the story was uh captivating me enough so let me ask you this yeah how many stars did it get uh four stars four stars for a crappy uh, movie it was like a a five-star review oh i thought it was a 10-star review no one star. See, yeah, Cy so probably would have uh, stood yeah. by you on that one. Cy so probably would have hit me upside the head saying, why would you even go see a Matthew McConaughey movie? <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, com- here's some of the stories he was working on, or that he had done, not working on. It's not like he, he was retired already. These are, the, these are the stories he was doing yeah. when he was considering retirement. See, that that would have been funny, too. Oh, these are the stories he was working on. And we'll never find out the answers because nobody over at 22 will will find will <laughs> investigate to find out. Uh, commercial vehicles are no longer allowed on this street in West Springfield. On January 5th, Cy reported on the ban of commercial vehicles 
using Larone Avenue in West Springfield as a cut through linking Elm and Riverdale streets. That was the first one. Okay. Uh, quadriplegic family member of Springfield DTBW worker in need of specialized van after crash. On January 9th, Cy helped spread the word about a quadriplegic woman in need of a new vehicle after a driver ran a red light and crashed into her sp- uh, specially outfitted van. I remember this. Nearly $20,000 was go- uh, donated to a GoFundMe. Oh, that's great. A uh, hundred plus plow drivers ready for snow in Springfield. They're gearing up. They have the plows. You should see the mountain of salt. Uh, firefighting Academy graduates 28 new firefighters. Mm-hmm. These are all good stories. They're finding them hot and leaving them wet. <laughs> Springfield Red Sox winter weekend. He did something about that. Yep. Uh, student designed St. Patrick's uh, parade, parade parade float for Holyoke's Grand Colleen. He did. He did. Uh, he did quite a bit. It wasn't just the movie reviews that he did. No, he did. I mean, he did a. Little, you know, the thing that I that I couldn't wrap my head around. Okay, so he retired l- last year yeah. or earlier this year. Earlier this year. All right. He died at the age of eighty six. Yeah. He was a month away from becoming eighty seven. Now I know Cy loved his job. I get it. But do you want to be working at the age of 86 years old? I, d- how much, I how don't. How much work is that, though? They know. Like, it's, you know, I he, mean. He was a longtime fixture to that place. They're not going to say, you know what, uh, they probably let him do less over the years. I'm sure they yeah. did, but he was also yeah. doing a lot of uh, like uh, work on the assignment desk, too. Yeah. But nevertheless, man, that's a, that's, like, you know, John Quill, same thing. He, you know, he worked until he couldn't anymore yeah. and then uh, and then that was that but it's like my god to be working you know well into your 80s unbelievable well i mean if you really love it that much well see that's why uh, uh i'm looking at 65 and i'm out out but, but but would you be out or would you be sitting there doing podcasting and all that stuff like like a well, lot of people I'm sure i'll do. keep my toe dipped into that's, something that's, but that's what it is but it's, that's not me waking up at three o'clock in the morning every I day i don't think he was waking up at three o'clock in the morning no I think they're like Cy, why don't you come in around noon after you've had something to eat and you know Cy was waking up in the morning yeah was watching movies he was uh you know, re- you know getting uh getting news stories together putting package pieces together yeah this is this is a guy who was like news twenty four hours a day. There's one of those TikTok videos I saw with Cy Becker reviewing adult films. <laughs> and now another look at the boobies. <laughs> I give behind the green door five stars. <laughs> Debbie does Dallas. Debbie doesn't go anywhere these days. One star. God bless you, Cy. Mm-hmm. It's uh, 623 on Rock 102. 625 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Uh, tomorrow is a Thunderbird Thursday. Uh, turn in, uh, Tune in around 645. We're going to give away a prize pack that includes four hats, four koozies, four stickers, a Thunderbird's drawing uh, drawstring bag, and four seats on the glass for this Saturday's home opener. It's a Thunderbird Thursday tomorrow here on Rock 102. Uh, Thunderbird Thursday. I can't. I uh, I'm looking forward to. Yeah, that'll be fun. It's I'm always a, fun. I always like the Thunderbird Thursday. You get the four hats, the four koozies, the the thing on the glass, and yeah, all that stuff. stickers, uh, and now a drawstring bag. A drawstring bag. It's a bag with, with a, a string. Draw- wow. That you draw. Oh, look at him rolling in D's with a good ass job. Damn right. Yeah. How about uh, <clears throat> how about we laugh? You yes. Laugh, right? Whoops. Okay. Wrong thing. You know what? I uh, I don't know what's wrong with me this morning. <laughs> I can't get my words out of my mouth uh, properly. Uh-huh. Well, more so than normal, and uh, I'm hitting the wrong buttons. Just forge ahead, Steve. It's all anyone can expect out of you. You want to hear the real joke? Yeah. I don't even have a joke. Watch this. It's Bax and Nagel's <laughs> joke of the day. I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown. I am usually on Rock 102. I make you laugh. Springfield's <laughs> classic rock. You know, as I get older, I think a lot about uh, all the people that I've lost over the years. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe uh, being a trail guide wasn't the best career for me. Ah! You see, you know, I lost them because they're in the woods. And they're I'm thinking people died. Probably dead being eaten by coyotes. Oh, and yeah. Stuff. That's it's disgusting. Tell you, right. Bax and Nagel in the morning on Rock 102, Springfield's classic rock. Here's your weapon. Do big name dealerships have your back? No. Does Marcotte Ford in Holyoke? Yes. 
Why? Because they're a community-based Ford dealership that cares. And you'll see why when you walk through the door. Have a seat in the Lug Nuts Cafe and discuss your dream with a member of the Marcotte team. You'll hear everything you want, selection, service, which means the start of a relationship with peace of mind for the life of your vehicle. Marcotte thanks the community for having their back, and they're ready to have yours. Marcotte Ford, 1025 Main Street, Holyoke. 630. With Max and Nagel on Rock 102, it's time for news. It's brought to you by Planet Fitness. Beat low E and find your big fitness energy with Planet Fitness. Only 10 bucks a month. No commitment. Deal ends soon. Here's local radio icon Steve Nagel. Well, thanks, Bax. Uh, just waiting for some, some stories to load here this morning. You know. So what? how was your night last night? Oh, have I got a story to tell. Oh. Was, uh, did you get yourself ready for bed? No, I bought a I bought a car yesterday. Oh, yes. you bought a car? Yeah, it's right yesterday. there in the lot. Oh, hey, yeah. how about that? Yeah, so we uh, and so it's very exciting, and I, and I really like the car. But then we were uh, very very hungry. We yeah. went to a restaurant, and I'm not going to name the restaurant, but it's yeah. one that we go to fairly frequently. McDonald. No, a little bit a uh, little bit higher end on Red, that one. Red Robin. No, a little bit a uh, little bit a uh, little bit better than a Red Robin. <clears throat> anyway, we get there, and uh, you know, we say table for two, please, and they bring us to a table. And it's 20 minutes. No one's come to our table. Uh-oh. No water, no what can I get you drinks, no nothing. We're just sitting there like idiots, just yeah. sitting there. They even get the like like table on the bread. Meanwhile, there's tables all around us. They're all getting their, uh, their wa- they're already you know, ordering their food. It's like we were completely ignored. We kind of tucked into a corner, but nevertheless. And we said, well, this is uh, this is crap. And so he walked out indignantly said well the hell with this you didn't go to the the can say hey look uh we've been sitting here for like 10 minutes is there anybody working well yeah by that point we were starving and so we were like this let's just try someplace else and we tried someplace else and it was packed you didn't and, try to get anybody's attention uh yeah i'm looking all over the place looking like where the in the eyes of the uh, the the wait staff and no one was coming to us Okay, but did you get up and go, hey, uh, did you forget about us? We're sitting over No, here. I didn't and probably should have, but it's like at that point, we're just like, yeah, do you know who I am? Yeah, but I mean, if it's a place you go into frequently, yeah. wouldn't you be like, oh, hey, uh, did you forget about us? We're sitting over here, just as a, as a little joke. It was bananas. It was uh, very, very unusual. I can't believe you walked out. Yeah, we said, ah, oh, to hell with this, and we walked down. 20 minutes. Would, but you could have gotten some. Yeah, that, no, I could. We could have, but, but it was like, you know, and this is a free. Are you never going to go there again? No, we'll go there again, but we'll we'll go there in a more visible table. I, d- 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 you're not making any sense. Why I know would it's you not making any why sense. Why would you leave? Because you know what? Or why would you not even say anything to somebody before you left? I think at that point we we're like we're so hungry and we're getting more and more irritable that we just said, I don't even want to eat here right now. It's like, uh, we just uh, changed our mind. We said, let's go somewhere else. Why don't you go eat in the brand new car? Why don't you go get takeout and eat oh, in the brand eat- new car? No food's going in that car for a while. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Wait, let's, get, let's get something messy. Like, let's get a yeah. <laughs> let's get a grinder with a lot of, like, mayonnaise and, and vinegar on it. Listen, don't use anything to, 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 as a I, bib. I want to enjoy that new car <laughs> smell for a while. Yeah. I don't want to I don't want to enjoy the smell of, a, like... A salad. Yeah, and, like onions. Yeah. Or a French, un, a French vanilla coffee. Yeah. Did you no, ever I don't do want... that before? You ever dump a French vanilla coffee? Oh, I've done it. That stinks so bad, it. and the smell lingers. No matter how many times you get, you can get a carpet cleaner, you can get all that stuff. That smell still lingers. Even there. if you're one of these people that loves the smell of vanilla, if it's been sitting there and cooking in your in your car with the heat, be, you know, batting down on it, yeah, stinks to high hell. A uh, commercial truck driver. Oh, was, you're going to get the news now? Well, because it finally loaded. The web page finally loaded because we have such great equipment here. A commercial truck driver was sentenced to prison for trafficking cocaine from California to Ludlow Service Plaza on the Massachusetts Turnpike. Ooh, that's a long haul, man. Are the prices higher for the cocaine at the rest stop like the gas prices are or the or the meals from the McDonald's? Oh, I'm sure if you're going to go with the, the rest stop, sure. Wait a minute. What do you mean uh, $500 for this uh, this Coke? Uh, if I go over to Chicopee, it's only $300. Yes, but we're on the pike. Yeah, it's a toll road. Yeah, it's premium prices out here. According to the Department of Justice, an investigation began in August of 2022 into a Mexican-based drug trafficking organization looking to set up a cocaine distribution network 
in the Boston area. The FBI provided information to the Mass State Police that two Mexican suppliers were heading to the state to deliver the truckload of cocaine. On August 29th of 2022, 31-year-old uh, Joel Enrique Armenta Castro drove from Boston to the Ludlow Service Plaza. Castro obtained 15 kilograms of cocaine from a tractor trailer driven from California by 25-year-old Gerardo Madrigal Quintero. Officers uh, witnessed the transaction and then arrested Castro. Shortly after, police stopped the truck tractor trailer on I-91 South in Longmeadow, and Quintero was taken into custody. Quintero of Mexico pleaded guilty to one count of distribution and possession with intent to distribute five kilograms or more of cocaine. He was sentenced in federal court in Boston to 29 months in prison and two years of supervised release. Jeez. Yeah. You know, I'm uh, I'm looking at the map. I was kind of curious. Yeah. You take a truck loaded with cocaine from Los Angeles to Ludlow. 2,500 22 miles. And what do you get for it? You get busted at the L- at the Ludlow rest stop. Oh. What a what a rip. Well, you know what? You, re- all, you go all that way for nothing. Think about it, though. This guy's from Mexico. Wouldn't you rather be in a jail in, in Massachusetts or in the federal prison system versus a jail in Mexico? Well, sure. And I'm and I'm sure the uh, the sheriff is more than happy to accommodate uh, his time. But I I nevertheless. Don't, I don't believe they go to the Hamden County House of Correction for You don't that. think I, so? I think they uh, they go away for, well, maybe they do, but if it's a, usually if it's if you're dealing with federal stuff, yeah. you usually don't go to the uh, county jail for that. Well, you know, the thing is, I mean, if you're uh, if you're taking uh, you know, I-80 east to, to 90, heading, uh, heading east, yeah. yeah, that's 40 hours, 40 and a half hours on the road. That's a long, long haul. And you're not even in Boston yet. Then you're another hundred miles or so, and then, or you could take uh, you know uh, I-70 East. It's forty-one hours. Oh, it's I, a long, long haul. I was wrong. I guess they uh, they do get sentenced over there. To, yeah. to the to the county jail. Well, until they're uh, tried. Yeah, yeah. sure. But oh, nevertheless, like, it's a long way to go to not fulfill your uh, obligation to the it, cartel. They let them stop at Randall's on the way up there and uh, see if you can get some donuts before you head into the big the big house. I'll tell you what, I'd stop there long before I'd stop at the uh, rest stop in Ludlow. Yeah, he, he, that guy is going to eventually get released and go back to Mexico, and he goes, you have to go to the Elsie Creamery. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I found this Listen, magical place. I'll tell you what. Those uh, those apple cider donuts yeah. are far more addicting that, than the cocaine uh, in the back. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's good stuff. I'm over strung there. out on, uh, on on little donuts. Did you ever have the ice cream over there? The else? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Dude, there was one. I can't remember what it was called. It was Midnight Moo River or something like, or Chocolate Moo Mint. That was another one that was good. Really? Uh, it's uh, it's got some, it's got some good stuff over there. <sighs> I, I would I would jump out of jail for it. <laughs> well, it's practically on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to look for other stories that are actually loaded here on the uh, on the web page. Oh yeah, yeah, the public is invited to an open house to learn about how clean dr- uh, drinking water is processed as part of n- a national advocacy and educational campaign. Imagine a day without water. The Springfield Water and Sewer Commission uh, will hold informational uh, open house at its West Parish Filters drinking water treatment plant. Mm. Yeah, we don't have to imagine the day without water. Do you remember the day where the, where the water, <laughs> water main broke and yeah, we, we had, had no had water, water for a day for, for yeah. a few days? Uh, visitors will learn about the history of the facility and recent construction projects, how water is treated for human consumption, as well as the need to improve water infrastructure worldwide or, uh, nationwide. The event is being held at the treatment plant located at 1515 Granville Road in Westfield from 3 to 6 p.m. Tours will take place every 15 to 30 minutes. We should go. We should totally go. Yeah. If I didn't have things going on, I would be be over there. Children are welcome with supervision and trick or treatment Halloween treats will be offered. Do you really want the Halloween treat from uh, from the sewage treatment plant? You know, years ago, as uh, one of those like little premium items, mm-hmm. you know, like rather than, like you know, like a paperweight or you know, like a block of post-it notes, the folks at uh, Bondi's Island actually had chocolate bars that they were selling with nuts and without nuts, with little Rice Krispies in them. Oh, nice! Yeah, yeah like yeah. little crunch bars. That's that's cute. Yeah, isn't it yeah. adorable? Yeah, I'm, I want to go to the, uh, the the sewage treatment plant. Yeah, that sounds fun. 
I remember, I think I was pretty lucky when I was a kid, like, uh, field trips from school used to be to pretty cool places because we lived near New York City. Sure. So you'd go to, like, the Museum of Natural History and the Museum of Television and Radio and, like, you know, all these cool things. You, you come up here and it's like, ah, oh, we're going to old Deerfield Village. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to we're going to a nature preserve for the <sighs> afternoon. We're going to a wastewater treatment plant facility. Come on, kids. That's now. Don't forget, kids. Make sure your parents fill out those uh, <laughs> those those uh, those permission forms so you can yeah. enjoy the wastewater treatment facility. Yeah, it's delicious. Road trip. Come on and get some fresh water, which they do. They I think they do bottle the water there for you, don't they? Yeah, yeah. they probably do. The uh, town of East Longmeadow invited the public to learn more about the council's plans to reduce the impacts from climate change and other hazards. The town council held a hazard mitigation plan update uh, Tuesday evening, an overview of the hazard mitigation planning process, a discussion of natural hazards and climate change impacts in East Longmeadow, and current mitigation strategies. Municipal uh, uh, officials and members from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission were available to answer questions and respond to comments about the project. I wonder if there was the people from the uh, from the town forum in there, like not asking questions off topic. Oh, I'm sure there were. Yeah, uh, welcome to the uh, environmental uh, strategy meeting here in East Longmeadow. Yeah, how come we don't have drive-through fast food restaurants here in town? Uh, I got a question. How come you're building another bank in a town that's got fifteen thousand banks already? How come we don't have another high school like Longmeadow does? By the way, there was somebody complaining about that yesterday. Something happened. Uh, I don't know where it was. Let me see if I can pull this up. Oh, is that the high school at, at Longmeadow High School? Longmeadow or East Longmeadow? Longmeadow High okay. School. We're talking about Longmeadow High School. Uh, I need some clarification. Parents of kids at Longmeadow High School, actually every school in this town, for inclement weather like today, we waited in line to get to her school for nearly 30. This must have been a day it was raining. Uh, for nearly 30 minutes, and by the time I dropped her off, she and among tons of other students received a tardy. I don't feel tardy. Uh, made them stand in line and get a tardy. He had uh, had it not been raining, she would have been on time like normal. How is it, with every other school here, lack of planning inc for, uh, for inclement weather, that the kids get a tardy? Are we, the parents, supposed to leave an hour earlier to drop them off on time? What about the parents that work? How is how is it that a nearly ninety million dollar school, who has the information of all the students that attend, as well as those who have parking passes, don't have a better plan in place for inclement weather? How is this the students' fault at all? Honestly, how and why is this even an issue? Had they closed off a lane from the exit on Grassy Gutter Road and let that be a drop off, or even opening the second roundabout drop off up front? which I don't know why that's even closed off at all, the line would have been quicker. You know, I understand these real-world problems. Yeah. I totally get it. But, you know, uh, and I mean this in, in all sincerity, there is not a college in America that has denied a kid admission because he had a tardy on his permanent record. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? No kid is being expelled from Long Meadow High School because he got a tardy for the inclement weather. Yeah, like uh, a late bus and is going to be responsible for ruining his high school uh, transcripts. Not everybody is perfect. Can you imagine going through your entire school? Those kids who get perfect attendance? See, that would be the one that I would not want to get. I want to be the kid that took a week off of school just because. <laughs> you know. I would hang out with that kid. Right. There was one girl in my high school that when we graduated, she had not had a single missed day in her since, entire career. In her entire school career. Yeah. We had a kid like that up until like eighth grade, which was still pretty impressive yeah. for being an eighth grader. But this was a this was a, you're talking about a kid well all twelve years of school. Yeah, like uh, from from kindergarten to twelfth grade, she never missed a single day of school because she was never sick, ever ever sick. She, she never still, gets sick. She's still alive. She is. Oh, and she's healthy as a horse. Well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, you know, that would be the ironic part. Yeah, you went every day. <clears throat> you didn't miss a day, and then you die. You know, the worst part about it is. She's not only healthy, she looks better than the rest of us. That's Barely aged, like this woman, and, and and had nothing done, just just perfect genetics. 
That makes me jealous. It makes me, I like just, that. I'm ripped. I'm like, so angry. Like, how did you never change? Everybody else uh, had some kind of, you know, deformities to their skin. Or so, yeah, some of us. Gain weight, lost weight. We have now have uh, fupas flapping down the bottom here. And you, you look like you, you just got out of gym class yeah. yesterday. Some, some of us have high cholesterol. We're on statins. Some yeah. of us are, you know, you're barely breathing, but yet you look like an 18-year-old woman at the age of 57. Yeah, and while you're sitting there on a, on a respirator, the last thing you can do is take that thing out of your mouth and go, ha oh, ha, oh, you're a nerd for going to school every day for 12 years. <laughs> what did that get you? Yeah, where, is it? Yeah, where are you now? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Your Pioneer Valley forecast is going to be uh, mostly sunny with a high of 68. Tomorrow, sunny with a high of 68. It's 45 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Oh, yeah. Rock 102. It's 653. And the Rolling Stones are back to Nagel and Rock 102. Going to be uh, sunny with a high of 68 uh, tomorrow. Uh, sunny with a high of 68. It's 45 right now in downtown Springfield. Uh, next Monday, Coors Light and Rock 102 will give somebody a chance to win $5,000. Join Pat Kelly and the road crew at Tap Sports Bar at MGM Springfield on Monday the 16th from 7 to 9 as Dallas takes on Los Angeles. If there's a safety in the first quarter, someone wins $5,000. Plus lots of other great prizes, too, from Coors Light and Rock 102. Come watch the game at TAP with Pat and the road crew at MGM Springfield, and you could win five grand from Coors Light and Rock 102 Springfield's Classic Rock. I'm reading the uh, the Massachusetts forum on, uh, or the subreddit on Reddit. Yeah. And one of the questions is, uh, what are the most dangerous streets or blocks for crime in Massachusetts? And the, even the people answering sound like they're from Massachusetts, right? Okay. So this, uh, this one guy goes, well, all the streets named after trees in Lawrence, those are the most dangerous. <laughs> and then uh, somebody goes, I grew up in Lawrence, never heard of this one. And then uh, some guy goes, I think you're all talking out of your a-holes. I worked in Lawrence for a few years. Our most dangerous places were Water and Canal Street and Haverhill Street. Never heard of this crap about tree streets. What do you want, drugs, you effing moron? I, I would uh, say I read that, it in that kind of voice yeah. too, because that's uh, probably what the guy sounds like. I would say that every street in Lawrence is potentially dangerous. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of streets in lots of cities that are that are dangerous. Downtown Springfield, uh, what would you say a, a dangerous street down there would be? Ooh, a downtown. Somebody um, said Calhoun Street. I can I see. That. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't. I don't think that downtown is the most violent part of the city. I mean, there's other there's other parts that are doing their best to catch up. They said uh, the flats in Holyoke. Mm-hmm. That's a dangerous area. Right. And uh, and Calhoun Street in Springfield. But no explanation of why. I, don't, I, I, I mean, don't I've heard of Calhoun Street, but I've also read many other streets that had many other different instances on them, too. That yeah. That come I mean, up all the time. I mean, the way I see it, you know, anytime I've been on uh, Calhoun Street, just minding my own business, you know, just walking around, you know, with uh, like a oh, yeah, extra walk, thick wallet. To, you, you walk down there all the time, don't you? By yourself. All the time. Yeah. And I usually wait until like late in the day, like 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. And, uh, you know, I often uh, will point uh, directly to the catalytic converter under my car. So if anybody yeah. wants to take it, you know, they can go right ahead and, uh, and do so. You know, yeah. that kind of thing. The, oh, yeah. All and right. I've never had a problem. Never. Never. I don't know if people are intimidated by me or, or, or what gives. I don't uh, I don't frequent any area that has, like, high crime. Like, I, if I know there's high crime there. What I are just, you, some sort of pansy? Can't no. handle a little crime around the neighborhood? No, I prefer to keep my vehicle. Ah, yeah, please. Yeah, you and your vehicles, wanting to hold on to them. I'm, you know, I'm really glad I haven't gotten a, a Kia or a Mazda lately because of that whole TikTok trend. Not to say that they're bad cars. They're actually they're great, great cars. They're good cars. That's the reason why they're being stolen. Uh, but uh, you stick with a Toyota, anything like that, they, they're they probably going to try to take your catalytic converter. Well, I hope not because uh, that's uh, that's not something you want to have happen. Oh, yeah. What kind of what, – uh, what's your license plate, Max? What's your uh, – Oh, it's a uh, eight. 8KL, 5KL, 9er, yeah. and the Batman signal. Oh, yeah, yeah. So if you see uh, Bax's new car, uh, that little jalopy he's got, that's a beautiful Yugo, by the way. Oh, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah. It, 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 I got uh, great mileage. Yeah, well, 
it, it'll last you 50 miles at a gallon. Marty Caproni will be joining us in uh, just a little bit at 657 or Rock 102. Want to know what it sounds like to win one? No. Bax's View from the Couch. Brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. Outdoor Power Headquarters. Steel, Craftsman, Aaron's, plus battery-powered Ego. Hey, good morning, sports fans. How the heck are you? Folks, you know me. I'm not the sort of guy who keeps puking out my political belief system onto people. What I believe is really none of your business. And in all honesty, I'm not that interested in listening to yours either. So as I approach this next story, be forewarned, my intentions here are purely about the game of baseball and not about backhanded political agendas. Last week, U.S. Senator Dianne Feinstein of the great state of California died at the age of 350 years old. She served in the U.S. Senate for 31 years. That's a lot of years. But now that she's gone, you may have speculated who will run for her vacant seat. I know what you're saying. You're wondering, Maxie, what does any of this have to do with baseball? To which I would say, keep your pants on. I'm getting there. Yesterday, in a surprise announcement, at least one candidate has stepped forward to announce that he is in the running. And that guy is former Hall of Fame first baseman for the L.A. Dodgers, Steve Garvey. Now, if you're like me, you might ask what sort of qualifications and experience does Steve Garvey bring to the table? I mean, Diane Feinstein was once the mayor of San Francisco, served on dozens of important committees, and had a long, distinguished political career. Steve Garvey was a 10-time All-Star and the National League MVP in 1974. And he owns a championship ring for the 1981 World Series. But then the resume seems to be, I don't know, a little light on accomplishments, as it has been for the last 33 years. Folks, not for nothing, but having Steve Garvey become the U.S. Senator is the equivalent of having Jethro Bodine of the Beverly Hillbillies wanting to become a brain surgeon. In fact, the only thing that the post-baseball Steve Garvey is known for is a long list of unwanted pregnancies, a bunch of fraud charges, and a divorce settlement that would break most men in half. Listen... Steve, in spite of a lifetime batting average of 294 and an on-base percentage of 329, I don't really see those sorts of achievements being worthy of you taking up space in the United States Senate for the next six years. I would like to think that the voters of California might choose somebody, oh, I don't know, with a little more to offer. But hey, never my yapping sports brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. Few chainsaws can rival the performance and reliability of a steel chainsaw. That's why when you see professional loggers or arborists, they're out there with the orange and white. They're steel all the way. Get your steel and near it at your neighborhood Rocky's Ace Hardware. I'm back. That's my view from the couch. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 7-Eleven and Van Halen. With Bax and Nagel and Rock 102. I'm going to be uh, mostly cloudy today with a high of 68. Tomorrow, more of the same with a high of 68. It's 45 right now in downtown Springfield. And Marty Caproni will be here uh, in just a little bit. He's, uh, I'm not old, my brother. Yeah, you know, he'll be here. Oh, will he? No, he'll, he'll be. I mean, he's already texted that he's run a little bit behind. Things happen. Yes, yes, they do. Uh, especially when you're expecting someone. Well, <laughs> what are you, you going to do? Like, like we couldn't uh, find our way through it? Just the the two of us. I'm sure uh, we can. I, I guess not. Um, I he's was driving re- in right now. Oh, oh, he's pulling in right now. Pulling, pulling in. Pulling into the parking. Of course, lot. he's taking the furthest parking spot away from the front door, which I don't really understand the point of that. Well, that's so he can go take a nap after the show. He lives in that car. <laughs> you, ever, you ever open it in there? He got like sleeping bags and tents and <laughs> canteens and <laughs> some MREs just some, in case. Some hot sparks that they give Boy Scouts just in case they need to start a fire in the woods. That's, uh, that's yeah. what we're doing with. Well, I'm looking at the security camera. I want to see him sprint across the uh, the parking lot. Um, I'm reading this uh, this article uh, yesterday. The game-changing digital film cartridge that adds 20 megapixel micro f- uh, sensors to any 35 millimeter camera. So you remember the old uh, the 35 millimeter rolls of film? Yeah. Well, you can uh, you can do that now, and it's it retrofits into a camera where it's actually a digital camera. You're basically making your old you're making your, your okay. regular camera a digital camera, which is pretty neat. That's it's got the awesome. whole little thing on there. I'm like uh we had what? Polaroids? Yeah. We had Polaroids. Uh we had uh we had a couple of cameras that just yeah, you know, the uh the disposable ones. Yeah. Those weren't great. Those disposable ones. Uh, 
those were always fun <laughs> to mess with. I told you what I've done with those before, right? Nah, what did you do? Years ago, I'm at a party, right? Yeah. Over in uh, in Long in Long Meadow. And uh, there was a, it was a party going on. People had uh, there was fun saver cameras there. Okay. So I uh, decided to have some fun with it, and then like two months go by, and I see this guy. I see a guy from the party. Yeah. At another party, and he's like, "Hey Nagel, uh, next time you want to take pictures of your nuts, could you not do it on the same camera I took pictures of my kids at the beach with?" <laughs> I saw. I, I was like, "It was the brain. I gave you the brain." <laughs> Hey! It's what, Marty, Capone, Marty Capone, Capone, everybody! Look at them all dressed up and everything. Look at them. Oh, sorry. Hey, I... where'd you get that sweatshirt? Did we get that sweatshirt? Yeah, they gave it to me. We have sweatshirt. those sweatshirts available? We yeah. do? Yeah, well, where did you get that? Promotions lady gave it to me. When, when was that? When did she oh, do that? Oh, God. Months ago. Months ago? Months one ago. One of the first times I was filling in, yeah. I don't have one of those. Do I've you? got one of those, but I, I haven't uh, seen I, it in a while. I have an old, old one. Yes. You got a brand new Rock 102 sweatshirt on. Wow. How are you doing that? How's it going, Mark? Not even an employee uh, and look I'm at you again. Struggling this morning. I got one hand. I don't know if you guys can notice this, but uh, the the gout is uh, has hit my right hand. Oh, you got a bad case of the gout. Huh? Yeah, you know what it was? I had a clam cake on Sunday. Oh, that's oh, yeah. it. Remember the one I told you? Oh, you, that's why you weren't eating it. Yeah. And it and was sitting like, there, and I go, you going to eat that crab cake? You better I, eat that. And then that's all I needed. My fat, my yeah, fat self well, was like, "Well, I mean, Steve said I should probably listen, eat it, so I'm, I should I'm, eat it." I'm glad I could help you out. And uh, and now I don't have a hand. So uh, couple, and that's your business hand too. This is yeah. This is yeah. The, this is the big one. So I'm I'm driving in like a GI Joe action figure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I only have the use of it. The, the one where the dog chewed the arm off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Yeah. Like you, know, so you don't have the kung fu grip anymore. N- no, not at all. Not I, at all. I'm glad you showed up. We were just going to get into a conversation about 35 millimeter film, but go ahead. I pulled into the parking lot. And I could hear you guys talking about how you could see me pulling into the parking lot. I don't know if you guys noticed, but yeah. I, I took a standing ovation when I came into the parking lot and uh, gave you guys a nice bow. <laughs> oh, is that what it was? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't see that on the camera. <laughs> was that you trying to kick your keys across the parking <laughs> no, lot? Why, just, why, why do you park the furthest away from the building? I've just always parked in that spot. Yeah. I don't know why. That's your yeah. spot. Because you know what it is? is that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not an official employee, so I feel like I should leave the official yeah, stuff. Yeah, but you know, at 7.15 in the morning, uh, <laughs> here, park, right? it's, yeah, it's like there's only three of us in the whole building. You, yeah. have your, you, can, you can park pick anywhere. and choose. Well, I didn't want to, I don't want to take, you know. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Yeah. That's the same parking spot that's been for the last four years. <laughs> uh, so uh, just coming off the, uh, the show from the other night. At, yeah, uh, good at time, right, Steve? We that, had fun. That was a great show. It was worth the use of my limb today, so it was, uh, it was fun. Oh, good crab cake. <laughs> good time. You're like a mess today. What's going on? Well, because I couldn't get ready with one yeah, hand, yeah. you know? So you, Jumping around, hopping on one leg. Oh, my God. Trying to, like, yeah. trying to do my belt buckle was yeah. the worst pain. How uh, are you so. supposed to go to the toilet? Yeah, I haven't figured that out yet, so we'll oh, give you a status well, update around 8.30. To, to use the other hand. <laughs> if I, I have guess. a coffee, I'll give you a status update around 8.30. Uh, all right, well, Dribbles, Ma- <laughs> Dribbles Caproni is in the studio right <laughs> yeah. now. But you, uh, yeah, we did the show on uh, on Sunday night. Good times. Uh, that was uh, probably, what, 80 people there or so? Uh, yeah, I'd say somewhere around that. Yeah, yeah. yeah everybody had a good time. 80, yeah. The nice thing is when everybody's a fan of the show. It was that was yeah. the most insane part. Yeah, is I I think there might have been three people that because they're waiting, aren't they're show fans. And by the way, remember the guy at the end yelled out, "What was the story you couldn't tell on the air?" Yes, that was the, that was the bit that the bit we did at the end at the was end, the that's what we he was talking about. Talk yeah. about it because it was kind of sensitive. Of of what had just recently happened, so we, I didn't want to bring it up on the. Well, air. last Thursday, if you guys remember, I told the story about when I lifeguarded and uh, and uh, yes, I, I was teaching swim lessons. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone yelled out to me while I was on stage that night, diarrhea, and I was like, I'm sorry, what? Well, just go use the bathroom. Like yeah. I forgot what he was talking about. Right. Tell me the rest of the diarrhea story. Yeah. So you, embell- you uh, uh, embellished? I wouldn't. No, I no. just told him. I said, I'm not telling story. it today. Uh, I said, Steve Nagel will be there next week, so uh, yeah, I'll yeah, tell yeah. it then. Here's, here's the thing. We could tell that story on the air and completely we forget we even talked about it. Yeah, that's and what yet, I, And that these people you know, are 
on the edge of their seat waiting for more. I can't. Yeah, that's that's crazy to me. And then we forget about it and we move on, and they and they still have it in their head, and then they yell it out, and you're like, what? You yeah, what are you talking forgot. about? Yeah, right. <laughs> I uh, that's one of the things I said to everyone. I said, they go, oh, we really, I, I love. By the way, holy cow! I have to I have to give a shout out to them. We have so many listeners in Connecticut. I I don't I don't know if. Like oh no, we're aware of it. You're aware. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh no, we know. Yeah, because I I was down in Connecticut. I had people show up at the show on Friday. I'm in the bathroom and I can hear them at the door going, "I can't believe Marty Caproni's here," and I'm like, "In the what? bathroom." I'm in the bathroom like, "What? What are they talking about?" And they're like, "They're a Rock 102 listeners. The signal carries." Oh yeah, all the way down to New Haven area. Uh, we are quite popular. Uh, I, you know, believe it or not, it never ceases to amaze me. Still uh, to this point, so where were we, where were you in Connecticut? In New Haven? Uh, just outside, yeah, just <clears throat> outside. I was doing a fundraiser show or whatever, and uh, I, it was insane. It was really, really insane the amount of people that listened to the show. And they they said they go, we really don't have a lot of good signals, but this signal comes in the clearest down that whole 91 corridor so well do we know of any italian restaurants or elks clubs in the new haven area that we could uh, do a show listen at? if there's any in connecticut and they feel free to reach out i'd be uh be does, happy to do that does right. frank pepe's or sally's a pizza uh, 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 a a i don't understand that's the whole new haven thing they say a a pizza it's part instead of just pizza like sally's pizza or frank's pizza it's yeah. frank's a pizza what do you Sally, mean? a pizza a pizza? Yeah. yeah. Why do they put that? Why do they do that? Because they're New Haven. They can't. Yeah, because they, they just guess. do whatever they want. When you got the best pizza, you can just name it whatever you want to name it, I guess. A pizza. A pizza. Ah, a pizza. Yeah, right. A pizza. Is that what it's supposed to be like? Like the Italian dialect? Yeah. And they it? take it very serious down yeah. there. Like a whole, I'm on a group of just pizza holics, it's called, yeah. on Facebook. And the people in that group, they post their pizzas when they get it. And it's every week, it's the same thing. They post a picture of Sally's pizza. Ah, the quality seems off lately. Blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. And then yeah, they all sure. pile on. Get the hell out of here. Yeah, get out of here. Don't you insult yeah. Frank Pepe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that, it actually is pretty good pizza. Have you it's, had it before? I've had both of it because Joker's Wild, the yeah. uh, comedy club, used to be across from Sally's uh, right. pizza. That so, was the original one. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I've actually. They're, they've expanded, too. Like Frank Pepe's, they've blown out to a few different places. Yeah. And uh, I was doing a show in Stamford, Connecticut, and my buddy Joe Garrix, who I do a, a, my podcast with, uh, he I was doing the show with him, and he's like, meet me at uh, Sally's uh, A Pizza. A Pizza. In Stamford. And I was like, I didn't know they had one. He said they just opened it. And I went. It was delicious. Wow. No, so, yeah. Good and there's one not far. There's one like in Rocky Hill or something like that, Connecticut. Too. We, we always wind up talking about food. I, I mean, I, yeah. I just sat down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my it's, hand isn't working. My hand isn't working because of food. And we're already talking yeah. about food. Well, yeah, it would be, uh, it wouldn't it be interesting, though, if uh, you could combine, say, like a comedy show with a meal. Yeah. And uh, like a cheap meal. Yeah. Do you know any place where you can get one of those? It's so weird that you guys always bring this up and it just happens <laughs> to be <laughs> that I have a show. It's uh, yeah. so bizarre. Yeah. But uh, thanks for bringing it up. Hey. Uh, this week, not tonight. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, uh, we have. Now, the star of the show, Steve, is always the buffet, so we'll get that out of the way. All right. That's Sorry to headline. humble you That's that the way. headliner. Yeah. But the headliner for tonight, is, or for Thursday night, is going to be, um, we're just going straight Italian. It's going to be uh, pasta, meatballs, salad. All right. All okay. right. And, uh, and Steve Nagel, our very own Steve Nagel, will be headlining uh, the show. I'm if, actually cooking the pasta yeah, and yeah. the meatballs in the back. <clears throat> it's going to be so funny if people are be blasting spaghetti meatballs right out their nose <laughs> all night long. Listen, last week, this is no BS, I came on the show, we were talking everything. We, if you guys remember the star of the show last week was uh, garlic crusted chicken. Oh yeah, that's which right. Which was delicious. Chef Larry and Chef Jeff whipped up a ton. I said, I think we're going to have a pretty busy night. You know, no big E, you know, right. whatever. The people... These listeners are so great. Just kept coming in the door, coming in the door. So while I'm happy that they're coming in, very quickly that happiness turns to utter terror when I realize, <laughs> are we going to run out of chairs? Good to run it. No. Yeah. Oh, we're going to run out of food. So like, I'm down in the kitchen. Like, you guys got to gotta 
make some more garlic crusted chicken as fast as you can. Yeah. They were the kitchen was blown out. We ran out of silverware. I had to run down and get more silverware. Wow. I was I was moving I, I was think, moving food. I was uh wait waiting. I think it's gonna be pretty busy tomorrow night too. I think well we're ready for it. That's why we're doing the uh the pasta, the meatballs and the salad. Nice and easy. Yeah. It's it's nice and easy and, and uh that way people won't have to wait around for the food because the the last probably 15, 20 people last week had to wait around for a couple of minutes to get their food. So I, feel, uh, I felt real bad about that. You know, I DJed a wedding one time where they had like 300 people and they ran out of food at about 125. That's it. And awful they had food. to like oh, order tough. pizzas and like all of the stuff uh, to get to them. We don't want that happening here. Nope, nope. So, yeah. so uh, Chef Larry and Chef Jeff in the kitchen at View Street know what they're doing. They're they're on the they're on there the ball. You go. There you so go. So we're gonna be ready. So if I could say anything, it would be this: if you do what you did on Sunday, then everyone's in for a treat on Thursday. All right. He did good. He did great. Awesome. Yeah. Great. He did. Uh, what'd you do? Like like twenty five thirty minutes. Twenty five probably. I yeah. Think, yeah. And then uh, I went up and I did like about uh, I don't know forty five or something yep. like that. And then Steve came back up, and we did a Q and A for about ten. Now, and then we did uh, our 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 Joe Castiglione bit. Now, and, you, now you're going to be there tomorrow. You're going to be there tomorrow. I right? will be there so tomorrow. Do you want to do that at the end? Then we'll, uh, we uh, bring you back up and we'll uh, we'll finish out. Yeah, we'll we close can it do out that. I, I enjoy doing that because it never ceases to not it, like I laugh every time we do it. So <laughs> well, because we come uh, up with different lines to it too. It's so not always funny. the same. But yeah, it's, la- but it, the theme is the same. Yeah, Sunday and the people on Sunday seem to have a good time. So that was a lot of fun. So well, we're go. having fun, man. We're back in the saddle here. There you go. It's seven twenty-five and Rock One Hundred Two. Hey, Tom. it's uh, seven twenty-seven with Bax and Nagel and Rock One Hundred Two. Hey, uh, real quick, uh, Thursday, November second, it's Rock One 2's Mayflower Marathon Comedy Night at the Armory at MGM Springfield. Uh, brought to you by Dave Miner Exterior Home Improvements and Aqua Pump. A big fat evening of laughs to benefit the Open Pantry and the Mayflower Marathon. Marty Caproni will be uh, the headliner along with uh, Brian Plum and Katie Arroyo. And, of course, uh, Steve and I will be your hosts for the night. Tickets are on sale now at rock102.com. Seating is limited, so you want to buy yours right away. It's the Mayflower Marathon Comedy Night, November 2nd on Rock 102. Uh, speaking of which, that's going to be a great night. I I went to that roar over the weekend. I heard, and you were you were right about. Listen, the show it's a great place to see a show. Yes, if you're an audience member, if you're a comedian standing in that back behind the stage, yep. you can't hear anything because of the the vaulted ceilings in that building, that, and it just echoes back, and it just feels like a big. Yeah, the green room there is one of the turrets for the castle. Yeah, so the sound goes into that turret and when they redid the room they didn't account for no one thinking the sound has to be good in the turret so it just bounces around the turret so when you're in the green room all you hear is <laughs> so the, so everybody's an adult in the charlie brown cartoons pretty, yes exactly yeah. so the tip that i always give if i like a comedian and they're coming to town i always tell them before you freak out and say it's a terrible room and get in your head before you go on stage when you're in the green room, it sounds like absolute garbage. But to the actual people out there, you know, the staff from MGM from like Vegas came out to do the sound in there, and they, yeah. this this sounds like crystal clear in the room. But it can get in your head if you don't know that when you're in the green room. So I gave I gave Nago that tip on Friday when yeah. he went down. Yeah, it's a it's a great looking room. It looks it really great. Is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, But those tickets are on sale. So uh, join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to raise money for the Mayflower Marathon. That's going to be a blast. That night will be fun. You know, maybe we'll get you out to the crab stables, Max. Maybe we'll get you. Out. Yeah, I don't know. I don't a know. Nickel I'm, Buffalo. I'm not a, <laughs> I'm a I'm a lover, not a gambler. That's no. uh, that's me. That's uh, what right. I do. But I'll be uh, I'll be out there. It'll be fun. Oh, he'll have the craps all. It just won't be. At <laughs> yeah, that, but that, that has nothing. Casino. To, that yeah. has nothing to do with the casino right. or the or the comedy show. That'll be because we go to Red Rose and eat four pounds of Red Rose salad before the show. You well, I like my roughage. Yeah, I do. I love that. That salad's good. Salad. <sighs> we got news coming up next on Rock 102. Looking for a fan? Seven thirty one with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's time for news. Brought to you by Gary Rome Hyundai. Technicians get up to a five thousand dollar sign on bonus right now. Learn more at GaryRomeHyundai.com slash family. His local radio icon, Steve Nagel. Uh, thanks, Bex. Uh, uh, here's, here's what's going on with 22 News. You ready? Yeah. So yesterday, I tell you about that accident on Granby Road. 
and they say there's a there's a three car accident that closed Granby Road, but they don't say where on Granby Road it was closed. There's okay. no detail to that. So now I'm looking at uh, the 22 News website. At that story was posted yesterday at 5:25 a.m. and it didn't have any other information other than there was an accident and then the kid from 22 saw a tow truck with a flash <laughs> was of waiting lights, for you to right? do it. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Today, I look and it says, ooh, updated October 11th at 5.06 a.m. They must have more information on this story. Right. Here we go. A portion of Granby Road was closed Tuesday morning due to a three-car accident. When the 22 News crew arrived, they saw a sedan with its front end smashed in as well as a truck being towed from the area. It was a three-car accident. The portion of Granby Road at the bottom of the hill was before the set of lights was closed, and there's no word if there were any injuries. Are you kidding me? After... 24 hours? You have no information to update this story. Why is it even on your website? Why? If you've updated it with no real information, what are you, what are you doing repeating it? It says they have reached out for more information and will update the story as soon as more information becomes available. I'm sure at some point during the day, a dispatcher <laughs> would have been like, yeah, this guy drove off the road and uh, it was a horrible accident and... Uh, Man, 24 hours to, later. Yeah, 24 yeah. hours later, we still don't have any information We've on a had car a accident. a whole day, and we finally cracked the case. The accident was at the bottom of the hill. That's investigative reporting. I'll well, tell you what. Cy Becker would never let this happen. That's right. Cy Becker would have been Another right into it. Look at the motor crash. That's it. You know, you, uh, Marty has, uh, and you, you have, uh, heard my jokes about the channel twenty two and channel forty, yes. and uh, I kind of get I kind of crap on on channel forty a little bit more in that in that comedy, but I don't know, man. They seem to be on the up and up and have a little bit more uh, information than most other news stations. You do. Given, you give you put twenty two on notice, they get their stuff together. I think twenty two was on notice the day Barry Krieger walked out the door. Ah. Uh. Barry, the yeah. Kriegs. Well, you know, I, it's yeah. like they let him go. It's like it's like the Red Sox releasing Babe Ruth. Go, and he said, "You'll never win another one of those <laughs> awards that no one's ever heard of ever again. <laughs> You'll never know any of those awards that yeah. other ra- other television stations claim they won." And now Barry, and now Barry's happily uh, not doing TV. He's got a beard. No, he, listen, yeah, Barry has settled a into time. a pocket. He is in the, he is. the retirement pocket. Yeah. He looks like he plays hacky sack all day. He does. Listen play to the Grateful Dead. <laughs> he does. He plays he really, the hacky sack. He's listen to Grateful uh, Dead. Do uh, those devil sticks. Do you remember those? Oh, yeah, the devil sticks. Yeah. So you, the, people would be high and they just click the sticks back and forth. Man, you're just uh, bringing back 90s uh, history. Yeah, 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 well. There was, like, there was always that group of stoners in school who did all that stuff. Yeah, that group yeah. was called my entire college, Franklin Pierce <laughs> University. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, everyone had a hacky sack and a, and a set of devil sticks. A uh, commercial truck driver was sentenced to prison for trafficking cocaine from California to the Ludlow Service Plaza on the Massachusetts Turnpike. Oh, you almost made it. That's yeah. what I was saying last oh. hour. It was like 2,100 miles, 40, ro- 40 oh. road hours, and you get to Ludlow before oh. it all comes clamping down. Eastbound and down. You know, oh, couldn't, man. Couldn't make it. According to the Department of Justice, an investigation began in August of 2022 into a Mexican-based drug trafficking organization look up, looking to set up cocaine Looking to set up a cocaine distribution network in the Boston area. Like a dispensary? Oh, you know what? I'm thinking about expanding my business. Uh, (laughs) I hear Boston is lovely this time of year. (laughs) Is that that your entrepreneur that was doing a startup business? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) All right, look, we'll bring all these cocaine to Massachusetts, but we're going to stop at Old Star Bridge Village to see how things were made before the man came along. Yeah, but can you imagine that some guy in Boston, like you know, yesterday, oh, yesterday afternoon, <laughs> hi, is uh, is this is this uh, is this consumer service? Listen, I'm uh, I ordered uh, a yeah. bunch of cocaine uh, the other day on Amazon. I'm still waiting for it to be delivered. Uh, can you give me a status update? Uh, I'm sorry, it's been uh, it's been hung up in Ludlow. Yeah. It's showing the Ludlow service area. By the way, why would if you made it that far, mm-hmm. why would you stop in Ludlow? Well, because that's where he stopped in order for another guy who came from Boston to meet him there. Oh picked up the God. cocaine. Yeah, they, yeah. they're going to transfer. Yeah, it was a transfer. Look, I'm not a criminal mastermind, but wouldn't you think if you spent all that time? You wouldn't do it at a rest stop where there's state police in and out of there every five. Mm-hmm. Well, don't you think you'd get off the exit to some like little warehouse area and do it like behind yeah. a warehouse? Well, you know, you think about it. You know, when you're when you drive up to 
a service station on on yeah. the Mass Pike, whether it's Ludlow or Blanford or you know Charlton or whatever it is. Sure. You're not really paying much attention to what's going on in the parking lot. No. You're, you're not. focused on getting to the front door before there's an accident. I'm usually Yes, the accident I'm usually worried about having is in my pants. So I'm exactly. usually running. Yes, I when I go there, it's tunnel vision. I don't care what's around right. me or what's going on. Right. I must get to the door before that old guy gets in my way. Right. On uh, August 29th of 2022, 31 year old Joel Enrique Armenta Castro, Joe. Uh, drove from Boston to the Lobo Service Plaza. Castro obtained uh, 15 kilograms of cocaine. Joe. Seven days. From Joe, a, we'll call oh, it's Joe. too many names. Yeah. Like, his name is Joe. Uh, that was just one guy? One guy, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, like a whole him mo- and his six brothers. It sounded like a whole mountain park car full of <laughs> <laughs> drug dealers. A uh, tractor trailer driven from California by 25-year-old Gerardo Madrigal Quintero. Jerry. Uh, Joe and Jerry. <laughs> Officers witnessed the transaction and arrested Castro. Shortly after, police, they let the tractor trailer go from the rest stop, and then they let it go all the way down 91 South and then stop it in Longmeadow. What? Yeah. Quintero of uh, Culiacan, Mex- Mexico, pleaded guilty to one count of distribution and possession with intent to distribute five kil- kilos or more of cocaine. He was sentenced in federal court in Boston uh, to 29 months in prison and two years of supervised release. That's it for a truckload of cocaine? Yeah. 29 months? 29 months. It almost makes it seem kind of worth it, doesn't it? For a truckload of cocaine? Well, what's he getting paid to to drive that Uh, distance? It's got to be a lot. To, to, I don't know, man. The distribution guys sometimes can be the the low-hanging fruit. That's like the mailroom of the drug cartel. You, You work your way up. That's true. Maybe, yeah. Maybe they get them outside like a Home Depot. Uh, cash. Like, you want a few days' work? Cash. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> drive for, can you drive the big rigs? Castro, also of Mexico, pleaded one gu- uh, guilty to one count of conspiracy to distribute and to possess with intent to distribute controlled substances and one count uh, of distribution. He was sentenced to four years in prison and two years of supervised release. It does seem very low for a sentence when you're talking about federal drug trafficking. But maybe what they if they're if they're uh, not U.S. citizens, maybe they just don't want them here long. They want them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just ship. They're like trying to ship them back. Uh, the Hamden County DA's office has identified the third suspect wanted in a shooting in downtown Holyoke last week that led to the death of an infant, according to the Hamden DA spokesperson Jim Lydon, the Mass State Police Detective Unit uh, assigned to the Hamden DA's office. And the Mass State Police Violent Fugitive Apprehension Section is searching for 28-year-old Kermith Alvarez of Holyoke, who is the third suspect that is being sought in connection with last week's shooting on Sergeant Street, which claimed the life of an infant. Alvarez described as five foot six, five foot six and sick, uh, and weighing about 230 pounds. He has uh, black hair and brown eyes. I'm not even going to get into the story because it's not even worth reading. Uh. Uh, but uh, you should really go and find that picture and see if you know the guy, so they can you can help find him if you if you know him. Yeah, you think the guy's still around here? You think he's long gone? That's what you know I, I, I don't even know. Hard but, to tell. Uh, but you, you got to be a, a pretty good. How could you show your face around anywhere when they find out what you did? You know <laughs> what I mean? Wow. Well, we'll, I, we'll just move on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Human remains were discovered inside of Wakona Park in Pittsfield on Tuesday morning. morning. Well, how many uh, how many human remains do you normally find in a Pittsfield park? 30, 40? <laughs> At least. <laughs> the discovery was made around 1044 a.m. by a city employee who was engaged in brush cutting work inside the park. Notably, the area where the remains were found is distinct from the Wakona Park baseball field. According to the police, the human remains were found in an advanced state of decomposition and a positive identification of the body has not yet been made. The case has been accepted by the chief medical examiner's office and remains have been collected by office personnel. There is no indication of any threat to the general public and ongoing investigation is being conducted by the members of the Pittsfield Police Department Detective Bureau. So if you have any information on that, if you hang out in Pittsfield quite often. The Pittsfield PD's on the case. The Pittsfield PD. Now, did this guy continue to uh, cut brush, or did you say, okay, that's it for the no. day? But do you remember that story last week where I was I was reading to you off the air of a woman who was, she was homeless, and she was in a field in a park, and a lawnmower came and... Oh, uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. And destroyed her, and... 
What? Yeah. 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 She was asleep, or she was probably passed out, probably from, you know, yeah. unfortunately doing some drugs or something like that. Well, but yeah, uh, yeah. he couldn't, he didn't see the body until it was too late. And then the town didn't even clean up the rest of the mess. So what? the father of the, of the woman uh. who was killed finds this, you know, yeah, there's still bone fragments and stuff like that laying all over this park field. It was disgusting. It was Where was this? It was in California somewhere. How, how I've had my lawnmower. I think we all have. And you've hit a rock, you know. Or yeah. It shoots into your window, and you got to replace one pane of your glass or what? How do you miss a body? I, I don't know. know. Well, I mean, if it's a if it's a heavily brushed area, you know, you may not yeah, you may you not you see her. Can you? I mean, do you have lawnmowers that just run through heavily brushed? Yeah. I mean, you think about a commercial mower. Yeah. And you think of how big these things and are. How and how fast they go. And how fast they. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That's a yeah. that's a not a good. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be obviously the victim. Yeah, I well, wouldn't want to be anybody in this situation, the victim's family or the guy riding the mower. Because yeah. The guy riding the mower now has to live with the fact that he accidentally did yeah. this. And he's somebody. still got all that weed whacking to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. Who's going to finish that? Who's going to yeah. do the trim? At least he helped the memorial service by spreading the remains. But yeah. I mean, fall uh, cleanups are coming. You know, I mean, you gotta, you gotta get, you gotta, you know, be on the ball here. I, I was gonna say, how could that happen? But then I thought about how every Thursday they come and they. Uh, do the lawn outside the studio, yeah, and uh, you can hear them while they sit outside with the thing. And I remember going out there one time, and uh, they had the big earphones in, and the guy they they really are like zombies half the time, just doing whatever. It doesn't matter what's going on around. Or yeah, they, listen, they're in their minds. They're already thinking of the next job we got to go to. Right. Yeah. You know, so right. I mean, I could see where someone might. Yeah, you'll be paying attention to the lines they cut into the, into the into the grass, but may not be a. a you know, all that cognizant that a body is right, you know, underneath the the that blades. Is a crazy story. It's gross. Yeah. Oh, I, like I said, I uh, I sometimes uh, my kids leave, you know, like a shirt. They leave like a sweatshirt yeah. in the grass or something, and you accidentally hit it. Uh, I can't even imagine hitting the body. Yeah. Oof. Yikes. It's gonna mess up your blade too. Yeah. You gotta, like, oh, you gotta sharpen to that, sharpen that thing right away. <laughs> well, you, uh, you know, you, that, that's what those husk varnas are for. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. You know. When they when they have that husk varna commercial, <laughs> where they get with it, where the trailer opens and it's just this jungle full <laughs> you know, of stuff. You know, some lawnmower salesman's using that yeah. too. He's like, let me tell you how good our lawnmower is. Yeah. <laughs> There's this lady out in California. <laughs> Your Pioneer Valley, they're mulching blades on the bottom. Oh God, oh God. Uh, your Pioneer Valley <laughs> forecast today going to be sunny with a high of 68. Tomorrow, more of the same. Does anyone feel good about this conversation? <laughs> I, Anybody? I, I kind of do. <laughs> it's, it's, it's 45 in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Oh, yeah. Where is this wine from, and what does it taste like? Rock 102, Springfield's ah. classic rock. It's uh, 750. <laughs> <laughs> and Black Sabbath with Bax and Nagel and Marty Caproni on Rock 102. Sunny with a high of 68 today. Tomorrow, more of the same. It's 45 right now in downtown Springfield. Hey, before we get into talking about tomorrow night's dinner show at the Loft Comedy Club, <laughs> sure. it's going to be only 20 bucks. You get yourself a free, uh, a nice buffet. And Steve Nagel. Uh, I want to mention real quick about uh, Baxi's musical podcast. My guest this week is Barry Andrews and the uh, the band Shriekback, also played with XTC and, uh, and, and, uh, and the League of Gentlemen with Robert Fripp. But a special bonus episode's coming out tomorrow with uh, with Canadian singer Lorena, Lorena McKinnon. She is a woman who sold 14 million albums singing primarily Celtic music, but she's sung in front of the Queen. She sang at the opening ceremonies of the Vancouver Olympics back oh, in 2010. Wow. She's won Grammy Awards, and that's only half of how interesting this woman is. It's a great interview. You'll find it tomorrow on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and a rock102.com, all brought to you by ZM Home Buyers and Rock 102 Springfield's Classic Rock. All right, let's talk about a comedy show that's happening tomorrow night for 20 bucks at a <laughs> buffet dinner. <laughs> What's to know? You're getting Steve Nagel? Yeah, you know how much advertising you've gotten from this, uh, yeah. this whole thing? Do you know how many times I've had to wake up yeah. <laughs> at 4.30 in the morning, drive through the snow? Drag and my oh, yeah. ass yeah, it's it's it. all the way from Chicopee to it. East Longmeadow and hobble in it's here to tell you that there's possible. With various body parts that don't work. Mm -hmm. Today it's my hand, uh, it was my foot one time, my hip. 
uh, yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm very grateful because uh, I will say that the people do come out, and when they do, we always have a good time. The, yeah. the Rock 102 listeners are fun. It's uh, then I think this Thursday will be no different. So I would tell everybody, uh, make sure you come, and I would tell them get there nice and early. You know, make sure you sell, get yourself a good seat because gets- the way. The way Nagel's talking about, we might be having to wheel out extra tables for this thing. So. Yeah. You know, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm uh, he's like, uh, like you know, cluster playing right now. He's been in so many comedy shows in like the yeah. last three weeks. It's like, it's like you're making a resurgence, Just dusting it off. That's, That's it. it. That's I felt, it I felt pretty good after that Sunday show. You did great. It was, it was absolutely fantastic. It was, it was, it was perfect. You know, what I've learned to do is take my time. Which I haven't, uh, I used to kind of rush through things just to get to the next one, I think. But if you just take your time with the punchline, let it sit in for a second, and it's uh, it's funnier than it was if you just rushed through it. Yeah, you know, you, you get these, like, uh, little gems of advice from people in green rooms, you know, mm-hmm. and it, like, some of the bigger names that you work with, they'll say this or say that, but one of the best tips I ever got was from a a, a Kid who's a he's Connecticut based originally, but now he's in New York City. This kid Mike Fenoya. Did you ever work with Mike? I've heard of him before. Really funny kid, but I I remember watching him, and then two years later watching him, and it was like a different comic. He was so much better. Yeah. And I said to him, "What are you doing? You know, like how did you make that jump?" And he said, "Well, when I was in New York City, so and so, like a big name comic, pulled me aside and just said, don't be afraid of silence.' And that one little tip helped me out a ton. You know." You get into this mode where you got you feel like you got to keep talking, keep talking, yeah. keep talking, but and you don't. You don't. Radio is kind of the same thing. Yeah, you, you take your time and, and and things will come. But you know, it's like there are certain comics you can look at and say that the, his rhythm and his pacing are right. have got that in mind. Like, like Anthony Jeselnik would be a perfectly good example. Great. Example. That guy takes his time with every setup and with every punchline. He uses that time in between perfectly. You know what I mean? Yep. He uses it to build suspense and that's what a lot of jokes are. They're just, you know, you're building the story, you're building the pressure, and then whatever the punchline is is just that release valve. Yeah. Jeselnik does that as good as anybody, you know. He's got some hilariously ridiculous jokes too. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to well, tomorrow night. You, tomorrow's going to be fun. I think we're going to have a good one. We got a good lineup too around you. So it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a packed show front to back. Uh, here here's something interesting you want yeah. to talk about, right? The the MLB playoffs are obviously underway, and despite some rule changes to benefit hitting, uh, only nine full time players hit 300 this year, right? That inspired someone to ask the internet, what profession, what what's a profession where a 30 percent success rate would mean you're really successful? <laughs> <laughs> and there were some good responses. The best ones include sales and marketing. Okay. Yeah, okay, it's true. It's true. Defen- One out of five, uh, you get yeah. Defense attorney. I can see that. That's yeah, actually those would be great. Great numbers for a defense yeah. attorney. Uh, startup investor. Yeah. Songwriter. Mm-hmm. Yep. Scammer, and real estate agent. You know, I would say restaurant owner too, because that's you know over like the course of time, because that's a, that's a tough business. Well, uh, yeah, but what? Well, you mean like if you have thirty percent of your restaurants succeed? Is that what you're saying, or? Well, it's like I'm mean, no, I would say like you know, like thirty percent of the restaurants that open, you know, probably oh, so last they, ten years if they stay open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. I thought so. You're, I, I would add uh, twenty two news reporter to that list. Yeah, if yeah, but that's guys, not about success. You they guys, usually move on to bigger uh, and better things or out of the if, out of the. If business. they get fifteen <laughs> percent, they're do, they're doing pretty well. I would say if Steve got if three, if there's three out of ten stories didn't completely drive Steve crazy. They're doing a pretty good job. That's a good clip. Uh, there were some uh, other responses like Stormtrooper. Okay, that's funny. Uh, MLB umpire, which kind of makes Hilarious. sense. Hilarious. True. And uh, whatever Jim Cramer does for a living. Oh, Because that guy is completely wrong about all of his financial Everything. advice, yet he's still like the number one yeah. advisor on television. How I, is that possible? You watch him. I don't know how he still has a show, by the way. He's already been they, – they, didn't they already have mom where they – they showed that he had conflict of interest. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, if, they, if for that's years, true or not, the guy but, has been has right. been either wrong or conflict of interest on any yeah, number of. Things. But he takes like an inflatable cow or whatever, like a squishy cow, throws it at the camera, says something crazy, and then.
And then the camera shakes. He's like, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like, who in the hell's watching that? Like, this is the guy I need to listen to to put There's my retirement. There's a lot of people out there. There's a lot yeah, of people that do. But you, I don't think you can do that job and be accurate 100% of the time. Yeah. Because you, you're, you're basically yeah. you know, predicting things where a lot of different factors have to happen. Yeah. And it's like you know, how you, you can't be right all the time. And, he, he, and, and his presentation, he looks like a retired shoe salesman. You know what I mean? He yeah. doesn't look like a good stockbroker. <laughs> the people who are successful with money and stocks and all that stuff do not listen to Jim Cramer. Yeah. They cheer Jim Cramer on though for convincing the idiots to dump their money into stocks that have no value to them whatsoever. And then they probably short the stock yeah. and walk out with a whole bunch of money. That's what you're talking about <laughs> right there. Yeah. It's uh, 758. We'll have more with Marty Caproni coming up on Rock 102. Prices are high. And now, Bax's View from the Couch, brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware, Outdoor Power Headquarters, Steel, Craftsman, Aaron's, plus battery-powered Ego. Hey, good morning, sports fans. How the heck are you? Folks from the Boston Bruins are busy putting together the most dominating regular season performance in NHL history. I thought that was great. When the Bruins choked harder than Jimmy Hendricks and his own vomit in the postseason, I stopped thinking about that regular season performance so I could only focus on how they got jacked by the Florida Panthers in the playoffs. Suddenly, all those amazing milestones, including that record of 65 wins and 12 losses, meant nothing to me. It was all a heartbreaking setup. Well, folks, tonight's the season opener for the Boston Bruins when they try to pick up the pieces of being blown out of the playoffs by a grossly inferior team. Tonight, they'll be hosting the Chicago Blackhawks at 7.30 on TNT. And while this is exciting business, I got a lot of questions. Questions like, how are they going to make out after Patrice Bergeron retires? Or how are they going to move on past the retirement of David Krejci? Or how is Milan Lucic going to look after being away from Boston for eight years? And how about Brad Marchand being the team captain replacing Patrice Bergeron? These are all exceptional questions. Of course, but the truth is, I don't have any answers. Maybe they're great. Maybe they won't be great. I don't know. All I can tell you is, I'm not going to start thinking about the Stanley Cup until I can be sure they're actually going to win one. You see, I'm choosing to learn from my ghastly past assumptions. I'm not going to fall into that trap of just assuming that the victory parade is already being planned. Instead, I've chosen to taking a cautious, more reticent approach to blindly following the Bruins in this next season. Because losing to the Florida Panthers in the first round of the playoffs is like having a junior varsity high school football team beat the New England Patriots. It's certainly possible, but it shouldn't be. And that's what I'm choosing to believe. But hey, enough of my yappings. Sports brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. Furnaces. Heaters and wood stoves are firing up. There's a reason why October is Fire Safety Month. Go to Rockies for smoke alarms, carbon monoxide detectors, and fire extinguishers. Get two. I mean, buy two, get one free. Can you mix and match? Yes, you can. Protect yourself with Rockies Ace Hardware. I'm back. That's my view from the couch. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic. Uh, tomorrow, sunny with a high of 68. It's 48 right now in downtown Springfield. Uh, tomorrow on the show, Scott Zolak. Uh, we'll be talking uh, Patriot football because there's so much fun <laughs> stuff to talk about. And uh, also, uh, tomorrow is a uh, Thunderbird Thursday. Your chance to win some uh, some stuff for a team. It's, uh, that might... the things are looking up. <laughs> yeah. nothing, nothing but positive things to say. <laughs> Lots of positive things. <laughs> Te- a team that actually performs? Yeah. yeah well, we, you nice. know, let's not get ahead it's of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Have, haven't, haven't hit the ice yet. <laughs> Uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, we didn't really plan on talking about anything. No, we don't need, so to, we don't have need to have a plan, really. You know, can we talk about the Patriots for a second before? Sure. I'm not going to be yeah. here, Scott Zola. Do you, I feel like it broke a record, but at this point, right, and I'm a Bill Belichick guy. I, I think he'll straighten it out somewhat or whatever. But at this point, are we all in agreement that uh, the season's probably shot, right? I would say so. So why doesn't he take that Malik Cunningham guy and just and throw him on and throw him in one of the games? Because he's probably got some sort of obligation to Mac Jones to play him certain amounts of times. Well, I mean, you know, I'm sure there's lots of incentives in Mac's contract, but you know, frankly, the kid's not doing it. I think what's going to happen. I don't think it's. I think I think they'll keep Mac for yep. as long in there for as long as they can. They'll turn to Bailey Zappi, and at the end of the season. They're going to take away the general manager position away from Bill Belichick and and maybe hire someone to do it instead. So this is what I was thinking. Uh, not only that, I was like, if you want to fix the Pats, 
and if you go by Bill Belichick's school philosophy, uh, you got to do your job, right? So he obviously didn't do the GM job, and he didn't do it well, right? Right. And the, I think the other thing that's going to have to happen is uh, if I was Kraft, I would say, hey, you know, this is a family business, but it's my family. It's not the Belichick family business. Have your sons go find some other positions elsewhere in the NFL now. They have enough experience. Send them out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, Set I mean, out. there's 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 lots of reasons for why things are the way they are. You have yeah. got injuries, you've got you know people not doing their jobs, you've had, you know, three offensive coordinators in two and a half years. I mean, you know, no one's doing anybody any favors. I mean, I, I don't know if we should be terribly surprised that it's not uh, gelling yet, but it's it it's not going anywhere at this point. Well, here's the injuries thing, right? So uh, you remember the big one of the big kerfluffles with Brady while they were shipping him out of town was because Brady's uh, massage therapist guy there, Alex Guerrero, right? Mm-hmm. That was his. He he was doing those that work on Brady all the time, and Brady obviously it worked. So other players were using that guy, and then Belichick got upset because that guy wasn't officially a team employee, and then he banned him from the facilities and all this. Well, now you're looking at these injuries and you're thinking to yourself. Geez, if you're Bill Belichick, you might think to yourself, you know, maybe there was something to that with that guy. You know, uh, there's this really interesting interview that was on uh, on TMZ on Monday. Yeah. Uh, with Asante Samuel. Oh, but yeah, okay, go ahead. And you know, he brings up something that you know some people have been hinting about, and and this is like speculation on his part too. But I can actually see like something like this happening. So you have Bill uh, Bill Belichick who you know for all intents and purposes has been named like the you know the the, the greatest, greatest quarter, ever, greatest yeah. coach of uh, of all time because of the success he's had and considering he's been there for 23 years which is yep. a ridiculous amount of time for a coach to be in one place yep for very long Samuel is saying that what the problem may be is that Robert Kraft is intimidated by Bill Belichick He's afraid of him. So rather than go and say, hey, Bill, this is what I want out of this team, it's Bill Belichick who's running the the yes. organization, and Mr. Kraft is just writing checks and, and seeming like a wonderful billionaire. But there may be something to that, like the expectation on Belichick are his own expectations rather than the expectations of, of a owner. boss. Yes. Like there's no accountability yep. in the same way that it used to be for Bill Belichick. Well, and I think that's where I go back to him employing his kids like that, like you know, like for cra- you know, for better or for worse. I get it. You want them to follow in your footsteps and everything, but you know, your father didn't keep you at Navy forever. You know what I mean, or or, or whatever. He uses connections to find you a job elsewhere in the league, and I think it's real hard to send the message to your players that everybody it's a merit meritocracy and everyone has their job because they perform, and if they don't perform, they're out. And then you ha- and then you hire your kids who are pretty much untouchable. You know what I'm saying? At some mm-hmm. point, and I think Bob Kraft. The only thing I would say, and it's funny because as soon as you said Asante Samuel, I'm like, that guy's been grinding an axe since the day that that Bill uh, showed him the door. Sure, but there's a lot of truth to the fact of th- that that was the way it was the first time around with Brady because Belichick said, "You never interfere with me," and Kraft agreed. I'll leave that up to you, but. When it came to the Brady thing, that was Kraft uses one pass to have them keep Brady, and that's when you saw Belichick trade Garoppolo for a bag of balls to to Forty ers You know what I'm saying? And just ship them out. Yeah. And that was kind of a passive aggressive whatever. And then in Belichick's mind, the next few years were just to get through uh, having Tom, even though they won. You know, it was just he wanted to prove himself right. You know the most incredible part about this whole conversation is? Yeah. Yeah. Is we've gone almost 16 minutes without talking about farts, food, or mm. the fact of the comedy show tomorrow night at the Lock <laughs> Comedy Club. Well, I was going to transition into another topic, uh, but because <laughs> I don't I don't know nothing about sports. I just like those little colors of the little yellow flags they throw on the field. I always wanted to be that guy. You want to be the, the, flag, the flag, flag guy? Oh, okay. It's like confetti. It's like you're like you're rip torn at a, at a at a birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> He's throwing out. Was it Rip Taylor? Rip Taylor. Rip, Rip Taylor, Taylor, right. Holy mackerel. Yeah, yeah that guy. <laughs> yeah, right. 
<laughs> uh, you want to change gears or yeah, sure, we can change fun. gears. Let's have fun for a change. Uh, do you ever you ever need to use the bathroom? By the way, the sixteen minutes is up, and you didn't do the keyword to cash. So why don't you do that? Oh right now? Yeah, yeah, you know you're absolutely right. Thank you very much. Time for the keyword to cash. The thousand dollar keyword today is the word great. G R E A T. For those who have never spelt that on their own, the word is great. G R E A T. Go to rock one hundred two dot com. Enter the uh, the keyword for a thousand dollars. You'll have until midnight tonight to do it. From Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. See, we're getting everything in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you we're ever, filling every obligation. <laughs> do you ever need to use the bathroom, but your body knows you're like still 20 minutes out from home? Yes. And the urge just kind of goes away? Yep. But then as soon as you pull into the driveway, bam, you Major really got to go. Someone asked doctors why this happens and what you can do about it. Are you ready for the science? Okay. Survey says. <laughs> Basically, your brain and bladder are constantly communicating to prevent you from urinating yourself. And luckily, they're pretty good at it. If your brain knows there isn't a bathroom nearby, it tells the muscles around your bladder, just chill out for a little while. Okay. Right? Uh, but as soon as you know you're near a bathroom, your bladder does too, and those muscles start contracting. So it gets harder and harder to hold it in, and the urge to pee skyrockets. So, is there anything you can do about it? Yes yeah. and no. Uh, the term for it is latchkey incontinence. Remember the uh, <laughs> latchkey kids? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. Same thing, because it tends to happen while you're fumbling for your keys at the front door. Yeah. It's a natural response, and you can't really trick yourself into thinking you have more time. But the more it happens, the more likely it is to happen again. So if you can break that pattern, it might happen less. Science! <laughs> with science. You're uh, essentially teaching your brain it's time to pee as soon as you see your front door. So if it's a common problem, you may want to start using the bathroom before you get in the car, even if you don't need to go. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Yeah. You ever get to that moment? We gotta open up your front door so you can deal with this. Yeah, but yet your key gets stuck in it with the other keys and the other uh, ring, yeah. and you gotta fight around with it and that, take you fumbling with the keys forever. That's why they're calling it latch key incontinence because you're fumbling around and you can't get inside. Uh, I, do you guys think your problem when that happens is number one? It's not number two. For me, it's number two. Are you have that's your issue with it? That's my that, I, number one. It's fine. Number two. Yeah, That's what I'm curious it's about. It's the number one I have the most problem with. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's like your you bladder. I, I, the older I get, I feel like I have to uh, do it a lot more. I pee a whole bowl. I'm going to be drinking a lot of water today because of this gout. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's going to be the same thing. But I I think it's number two for me. But the worst feeling is when you get somewhere where you know there's a bathroom and someone's in it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You ever, you ever yeah. do that on the pike where you get you were talking about our, our drug dealing friends there. You you get to the uh you get to the bathroom on the pike and you just got to go. You're like I'm going to crap my pants. You finally make it to the rest stop and all the stalls are full. And they got the thing closed while they're cleaning it for 5 minutes and you're just standing there like a little kid shaking back and forth. Yeah, walking around doing yeah. the dance. Yeah. So um how are the bathrooms at the Loft Comedy Club? Uh, <laughs> actually there's a uh, <laughs> they have a half bath upstairs. We have, and, uh, oh, really? well, <laughs> I mean, can I take a shower at the place? No. Or? Yeah. So the story is we have two bathrooms upstairs. Uh, one is just a now has become a universal bathroom. Guys, girls, whoever uses it wants to use it. There is no mirror, which is a running joke because Carlos, who are uh, Carlos Garcia, who is my uh, esteemed house MC and manager, who's great. His favorite thing he always says is. If you guys can keep coming back and bringing more of your friends, eventually we will be able to afford a mirror for the bathroom. Um, yeah, because you don't want like to find out that there's like stuff from the the, the meal, the yeah. twenty dollar meal in your teeth. Yeah, but we have a second bathroom up there, but we just don't usually use it because uh, we're still waiting on the partitions to come in. You know, between the toilets and the women's room. Upstairs. Oh, really? So, yeah. So now it's like one, like one toilet so, next so, to each other. So it yeah. looks like a like a boot camp when you walk in there. So you just could. toilets along the wall. <laughs> yeah, you you could actually sit there and and do that. Although the weirdest thing happened to me, and I didn't talk about it on stage on Friday when I was doing that fundraiser show. I like to use when you have to go to the bathroom and you have to go. I like to use the uh, accessible one. The one at the end, the the the. Uh, oh yeah, because you're yeah, really like, spread out. Yeah, it's like a corporate bathroom. And the toilet's at a comfort seat height. It's not at the grammar school seat height. <laughs> right. You know what yes. I mean? So I use that one. But I go into the bathroom and I, you know, 
make my little feather nest with the toilet paper as you do. And, uh, and I sit down and then I look over and there's a chair in the opposite corner of this thing staring directly at me. There's no one sitting in the chair, obviously, but I'm thinking to oh, myself. Oh, this was the other night. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, who <laughs> comes in here and just sits down and well, is like, how you doing? So when I was in the bathroom yeah. earlier in the night, there was another guy in there, or two other guys in there, and the guy goes, uh, I just let everybody know there's a chair in here, and I <laughs> yeah. don't know if anybody's coming in to join me. It was like two <laughs> yeah. dining. There were two dining chairs yeah, well, yeah. in the stall. It was weird. It, it was, was weird. And I'm like, what thing. are they doing? Meetings in here or something? Yeah. Well, I don't understand. Maybe if they had packed the place, they would have grabbed the chair out of the bathroom. <laughs> maybe that was the problem. Yeah, it was the extra yeah. chairs for the two people for, who didn't show up. Put them yeah. Yeah. Then we have one seat left. It was There's just one <laughs> problem. <laughs> <laughs> it was just real weird how it was positioned it's, too. It was yeah, aggressive. It was like it's not actually facing the stage. <laughs> right. yeah, it's a, it's an AA meeting location. <laughs> Sorry, you guys got here late. Uh, you're not going to like your seat at all. Yeah, the auto toilet keeps going off during the punchlines. Yeah, yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not here for the comedy. I'm here for the AA meeting. Yeah, it's in the bathroom. <laughs> There's two other chairs in there. It's 822 with Max and Nagel on Rock 102. Rock 102 and Aqua Pump are giving you a chance to. It's 825 with Bax and Nagel and Marty Caproni on Rock 102. Uh, the weather today going to be uh, cloudy with a chance of a shower this afternoon and a high of 68 tomorrow. Mostly cloudy with a high of 68. It's 48 right now in downtown Springfield. With the uh, Mayflower Marathon exactly 40 days away from today, uh, we're already talking about uh, you know guests. We're already talking about the broadcast. We're already talking about what we're going to do. It's different. This year happens to be the 30th anniversary. One of the things we are doing is the uh, the Rock Went to Mayflower Marathon comedy night at uh, the Armory at MGM Springfield, Thursday, November 2nd. Tickets are on sale now at rock102.com. Your headliner will be uh, New England's uh, comedy legend, <laughs> Marty Caproni, <laughs> along with uh, Brian Plum and Katie Arroyo. And, of course, Steve and I will be the uh, will serve as the hosts of the night. All the profits being donated to the Mayflower Marathon. Again, go to rock102.com. All brought to you by Dave Minor Exterior Home Improvements, Aqua Pump, and Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. That'll be a lot of fun. I'm excited for the actual Mayflower Marathon part. I'm excited to come down. Now, c can I sleep in one of the uh, RVs on the, if I come down there? Well, sure, you could yeah, sleep I suppose, in one of the yeah. RVs. I mean, I kind of want to go camping downtown Springfield. That, I'm sure that hasn't been done before. It, uh, actually, for, this for years. This is glamping in downtown Springfield. <laughs> this is not camping. I mean, for yeah. years, I used to sleep in the uh, in the camper. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, just someone needed to be near all that, uh, you know, just, you know, be there. Then finally, uh, after all that time, we're like, hmm, there's a big hotel down the other end of the parking yeah. lot, and I'm in a camper. Yeah, So, yeah. Uh, you know, but, yeah, it's it's so much fun. It's such a great event. And, uh, yeah, you'll be spending some time with us. Yeah, we're, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get some food and uh, raise some money. It's for a good cause. Yeah. We'll get to spite the, uh, my friends over at the hall same time it's one of my favorite pastimes you have a great time you're really uh, you're really not uh up and up on those people huh? i can't let it go hey you know what they <laughs> they got uh I can't let it go i'm watching the 22 news yesterday and they have the like, oh cy becker uh, you know was memorialized at the basketball hall of fame they put his name on the sign that's all they did. It wasn't like they did this. etched it in stone on the wall. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, the, and, the, and right. Listen, Rasai Becker deserved to have his he, name up on the thing. He, sure. the guy was a staple of, and, of the area. And but to be fair, Sai was a hell of a basketball player. I mean, that dude, yeah. that dude could ball like you wouldn't believe. Oh, it. you could see it. You could see it in his eyes. He, yeah. All five, two of them. He. <laughs> let's play a game of horse. <laughs> yes, let's go. <laughs> Who, if you had to do a Mount Rushmore? of Western Mass news legends, right? Yep. You go John Quill, right? That's sure. That's got to be up there. Cy Becker. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you got to go Dave Madsen, Ray Herschel. Yeah. Uh, Barry Krieger. Yeah. Well, the if you're going to if you're gonna whittle it down to five, to four. Yeah. Oh, boy, that's that's tough. I mean, of the five, I think you're, you're right. But uh, right. if you had to whittle it down to four, I can't think of who I'd want to take off. 
take off that list. If you could add an extra, it would be Sonia Baghdadi. Oh, yeah. Oh, my <laughs> God. Jesus. I ever tell you about that time she showed up to the Westfield State campus when I was going to school there? No. And, like, all the boys were just you, – you, there was no learning done that day. No. There was just, it was, the only thing we learned is – Man, they got some really hot chicks working at that 22 News Station. Oh, man. Yeah, after yeah. after uh, college, my my best friend, like we grew up, our our backyards touched uh, Jeff Wisniewski. He's, he's like an architect now and everything. But but back then, we were both out of school. We both had good jobs, and mm-hmm. we had an apartment. It was like a kind of a bachelor pad, you know? Yeah. And we used to we used to TiVo. That's how old this is. Remember when the Ooh, TiVo? TiVo? Wow. Yeah, we had the one of the first Tivas. We used to TiVo the news just to watch Sonia Baghdadi. Yeah. She was a very attractive lady. There were a couple of events that we were at, uh, you know, like all the media in yeah. town and you know, all the politicians. And Yeah, Sonia is, is, is not just a beautiful woman. She's a damn smart person and that a was very nice lady. Right. However, uh, when she would walk into a room, Every man, no matter how intelligent mm-hmm. or what kind of educational background they may have yeah, had, yeah. immediately what comes out of their mouth is, so how long have you been on the choo-choo? <laughs> that's yeah, that's yeah. what comes out of people's mouths <laughs> when they meet someone like that. Um, yeah, I remember one, like, uh, she did one of those I-team reports where yeah, she yeah. spent the night in an orange jumpsuit over at Ludlow oh my to God. show you what it's like. Those to, to poor work. inmates. Yeah, no. Because you, know, you know there was, like, there was like a guard there going, I'll take care of whatever you need, Miss yeah, Baghdadi. Yeah, Don't yeah, you worry yeah, about yeah. it. I'll, you know, I'll keep you away from all these scary people. Like, she wasn't in the general population. They basically had yeah. this section where they weren't using or it was a holding cell. That they made it look like, you know, this is what hard time looks like for Sonya Baghdadi. It would have been great if she got in there and decided she liked it, and you, she comes back after the next commercial break. She's got a face tattoo, and yeah. she's running she's, the joint. She's got a little teardrop hanging down her She's eye. working on her shiv. Yeah, she's making yeah. a shiv. Doing all kinds of stuff. Hey, what about Ron Russell? Who? I don't know. Dan Williams said uh, Ron Russell. Ron Russell. That's that's even be- That may be before my time. Yeah, that's Ron probably before Russell. all of our yeah. times. Yeah. I've never. Never heard of the guy, Ron Russell. No. John Quill. John Quill. Was, yeah. Well, he he was working until he was, what would you say, 90-something years old? <laughs> he was something like my that. Favorite. Was like a crazy, <laughs> a crazy age to be working. But my favorite was when, uh, because as he got to be older, he just, uh, you know, obviously your faculties aren't all there in the morning when you're probably getting ready. And John Quill sometimes would wear a green suit. Or a green tie, <laughs> and stand in front of the, the weather, the, the, and the, the weather would be on his jacket. And he wouldn't even know. <laughs> hey, with, with that cognitive behavior, you're able to run the United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, fair don't, point. don't 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 poo poo on that. Fair, fair point. It's eight thirty one. News is next. A rock one oh two. Low testosterone affects many men today, even men as young as thirty. But finding someone you can trust for 34 with Max and Nagel and Rock 102. It's time for news brought to you by Gary Rome Hyundai. Technicians get to a $5,000 sign on bonus right now. Learn more at GaryRomeHyundai.com slash family. Is local radio icon Steve Nagel. Thanks, Banks. I know, uh, you know, we wrapped up the conversation already, but somebody uh, mentioned you forgot about Tom Bavacqua. Oh, yeah. your boy. Yeah, Tom. Bavacqua. You know, he could be he could be on there. He could. But if you're going to have Bavacqua, you might as well have Paul Sutton. Uh, I don't know if I remember Paul Sutton. Oh, come on. He was on 22 for years. Was he? Yes, he was. Bavacqua, you had to remember because of the hair. What? Tommy Toupee, they used to call him. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something about Bavacqua. <laughs> we were at the... Uh, remember at the Sheridan, they used to have like yeah. a fake casino there years ago? Yeah. So we were there one night, and you know Bavacqua used to work out at the Sheridan. Right. You know, in between newscasts. <laughs> So in between, uh, after working out, he goes to the bar to have a drink, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's still wearing like his muscle shirt after working out. Yeah. Let me say you th- something. That dude was built like a brick no, I'm crap sh- I'm, house. I'm sure he was. Yes, but but he you know, was muscular, like 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 Lou Ferrigno type of muscular. <laughs> we don't have to get into the story we were talking off the air with, <laughs> but you, but people who say things to you and then later on in life uh, you realize they were completely wrong. Yeah. You were just talking about the Joe yes. Rogan thing. Yeah. Uh, Tom Bavacqua, I, I worked at a different radio station and I, my job was to record the weather in the morning. Right. They, they call in at like 5 a.m. and they record the two, the two uh, pieces of weather. And then that's the way it used to be. Now right. it's all done by MP3. But he had to call in, and you had to record him. 
So then he calls the one morning. He's in Maine. He's okay. not even around the area. And he's like, hey, uh, I just need, what, what's it like out there right now? And I go, I don't know. It's like wet on the ground. Or I don't, like <laughs> I've been stuck inside a, a yeah. booth all, all yeah, night long. Not. And he's like, you dummy. I didn't ask you if it was wet on the ground. What's the weather like out there? And I'm thinking, aren't you the weather man? <laughs> yeah. And he was just a, he was just a big jerk to me. And then I've never yeah, I've but, never I've never had a positive uh, no, thing about let that. Let me tell you, Bavak was a very very nice man. I, I will I will stand. You probably caught him on a bad day. You know what? All well, broadcasters have a bad day. It's called Monday through Friday. Yes. He was probably yeah. hung over from getting those martinis between the <laughs> 6 and 11. I'm not going to sit here and have you besmirch. Right, listen, him uh, and Cohen used to go down to the Sheraton. and they used to get loaded after the 6 p.m., and then they get there, and then they go. Uh, be that as it may. Uh, listen, when Steve made the comment about the, the, the Tommy the, Toupee, the Tommy <laughs> Toupee yeah. comment, that's why I couldn't stop laughing because uh, I know that story, well, and I know you can't resist listen just as all the people who say <laughs> they love e any one of us there's always somebody out there with a bad a negative story about you oh my god hundreds yeah all right hundreds. you want to go do news now uh <laughs> sure yeah since, we, <laughs> since we've uh <laughs> why do you do well, tell a story why we're you already in it why do you do weather just for <laughs> 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 well it's wet on the ground outside right now <laughs> You stupid idiot. I could go for a double bourbon and <laughs> Coke right now, too. Uh, I can't even read this story because it's a sad story and we're just coming out of it. Uh, Why even bother doing it? Don't do it. Yeah, don't I'm, do not it. Even, I'm not even going to bother doing It'll it. still be sad tomorrow. Uh, but, yeah, th those are the kinds of people that you meet throughout your career. And uh, sometimes it doesn't uh, doesn't end, end the way they thought. I, I, I love that you're still grinding that axe. <laughs> 20 years later. And then uh, Mass Live's got this story. When do I have to send mail and packages to get it there by Christmas? What? what? Why is this even a story? It's October. Yeah. Uh, get those Christmas cards and USPS ground advantage parcels in the mail by December 16th if you want them to arrive by Christmas Day. And you're telling us on uh, October 11th. Like, yeah. how many people are out there really getting ready right now to send out Christmas cards. Usually that's something you do the week before the deadline is due. I can tell you who's ready. Uh, the workers at Walmarts and CVS, because they're already putting out their holiday displays. They keep accelerating the holidays. Yeah. I did <laughs> I did a Facebook Live. You know how I, you always say, you used to do those walks around the state park at Chicken, you should do those again. So as a gag last week, I said, you know, Nagel is always saying I should do these nice walks, but... The pandemic's altered stuff, so I'm going to do my walk today in Walmart. So I did my Facebook Live in Walmart, walking around Walmart, just going to the different departments. I found a whole department of Christmas trees and Christmas stuff at Walmart. Dude, back in July, the Halloween stuff was already out. Yeah. July 1st, yeah. Halloween stuff at Dollar General. Can we make that illegal? Can they just make that illegal? Is there nothing more frustrating than watching your life tick by every time you go into a CVS and being like, it's Valentine's Day already? You know what I mean? <laughs> You're speeding up time. Yeah, they are. They're speeding up time so they can sell more crap. Well, that's usually how that whole marketing thing works. No. But they realize, hey, we can get people, if we just put it in people's brains. That it's coming, so we, yeah. Yeah, they, I think there's a radio station that starts November 1st with the Christmas music. There's some radio station in New yeah, Jersey that's, that does that's, that. That's obnoxious. That's obnoxious. That's, you that's know, obnoxious even if you start on December 1st. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, oh, you, that's all listen, you're playing. Yeah, the day after Thanksgiving, I can see you starting the Christmas music. Can you? I don't. Well, because it's the holiday season. Yeah, you're it's only not got even a month December away. yet. Yeah, but it's a month away from yeah, the next but, holiday. But going like you know all out, like like the you know around the clock with Christmas music is you know at, at some point yeah. you know it's just even gotta even stop. Jesus couldn't sit through that. <laughs> and every song's about him anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, here's another one that's named after me. Was <laughs> like, that's how he oh, picks up great. chicks at the bar. Jesus. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Like, oh, oh, look at that. Look, at this look who's singing karaoke. <laughs> but look who the song is about, right? <laughs> yeah, that one's about my mom. He's like, it's got to be about everything. Huh? It's finally a quiet night. And then they write a song about that, too. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. terrible. <laughs> this whole thing is just oh, silent apart. night. Yeah. It was a silent night if you could just shut up. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, the kid's trying to sleep, and a little drummer boy comes up, and, then, uh, and no one can sleep in that it. kind of racket. 
A uh, 65-year-old man in New Hampshire named Michael Arnold has been arrested for stalking a woman for four years. But he wasn't just following her around. He would also fly a small propeller plane over her house in New York and throw tomatoes on her roof from above. <laughs> that's really getting into it. When you're into that stalking thing, like you're, that's going the extra mile. Can you imagine being that lady and trying to make that complaint to the police department? And like, I think he's flying over my house and throwing tomatoes. And like, yeah, whatever, whatever, lady. They're like, okay, lady, why don't you, uh, why don't you, why don't you have a little more paranoia? Why don't you take your meds? You know. Uh, he sometimes do these, would do these flybys three times a week, and she could definitely hear it. So as she said he'd fly so close that the doors and windows would rattle. The woman said she made repeated complaints, but she couldn't get the authorities to take her seriously, like you just said, even when her neighbors corroborated her claims about the low-flying plane. And even when they did, she couldn't even get the police to work with the FAA. For the record, though, even though the plane was Michael's, he denied that he was the one flying it, but he refused to reveal who the pilot was. Somebody's got to open the door and throw the tomatoes out while somebody else is flying the plane. Yeah, I suppose. He told the local news, I might I might be able to, but I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. Uh, if they don't want to get involved, I can't get them involved. What? Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> Uh, Michael never had a relationship with the victim. It started when he was a customer who would show up at her cafe and be creepy. At one point, he emailed her unsolicited, inappropriate photos. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, I, how many how many clerks do you go in and see and go, oh, that's a good looking chick there? Yeah. But you wouldn't go to the point where you're like looking her up and finding out what she's doing and where she lives and showing up at her house. One of the things that's always bothered me, that I think, is one of the worst dynamics in the world is. Uh, like a pretty lady who's a waitress or a bartender and they have the the creepy customer they have many of them you know and they they basically have to sit there with a smile on their face while they're harassed all day you know what i mean it shouldn't be allowed frankly it shouldn't, it shouldn't be allowed but yeah you know, but you've seen it i mean you've 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 not only seen it happen all the time i've been on tables where someone who was sitting with us at a table is talking that way to a waitress and i'm yeah. like dude what are you doing oh oh all right now i got every it, a couple of months ago my buddies come up that i haven't seen in, <laughs> yes. in years and i take them out now i'm the sober one so i'm driving them around we're going to different bars and all that stuff yeah. we sit down at a restaurant and uh he's already but one of my buddies he's already had like you know two cap giant captain and cokes before we even left the house oh he's okay. military no, he's just <laughs> – he wants to be in the military. But uh, he, he's, he drinks two Captain and Coats before we leave the house, so he's already pretty lit. Yeah. We get to the restaurant, and he starts with the, I don't know, what do you think is good on the menu tonight? Oh you know, for the thing, and I'm like, stop. Like, just knock yeah. it off. I mean, it, there's no re- – this, this woman just wants to take the order – she wants to get right. done with her job. She wants to make the tip money from the thing, and right. she wants us to get the hell out of here as fast as possible so another group of people can come in. <laughs> she can be harassed yeah. by other people. So, but, but I know what you're talking about. You see you see people do it all the time. I could see having a personality, you know what I mean? I could see, like, being funny or witty or trying to be, you know. Yeah, but this was beyond endearing. funny or witty. This was right. creepy. creepy. Yeah. yeah, but that's that creepy, like, yeah. Wanna, yeah, wanna, yeah. I don't know. What do you think? What time are you working to? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, ugh. Oh, you're going to be taking care of me tonight? Oh, 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 that's something. It makes you wonder if that's ever worked for that. I'll have the cheeseburger. The cheeseburger. <laughs> You're not pregnant by any chance, are you? <laughs> Your uh, Pioneer Valley forecast today is going to be, because I got a body. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be cloudy today. Chance of a shower this afternoon with a high of 68 tomorrow. Sunny with a high of 68. It's 48 in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Oh, yeah. We see the world for more than what it is. We see everything it can be. Springfield Classic Rock. It's 851 and Pearl Jam with Bax and Nagel and Rock 102. It's going to be cloudy today with a chance of a shower this afternoon. Tomorrow, uh, sunny for the highest 68. It's 48 right now in downtown Springfield. So uh, let's just establish a couple things here. Uh, apparently, uh, tomorrow night at the Loft Comedy Club, there's some sort of comedy show with food. You know, <laughs> yeah, you don't say. Funny you bring that up, Bax. Uh, yeah, uh, as every week, uh, yeah. 20 bucks at the door. 
We'll get you dinner and a show. It's a uh, star of the show other than Steve Nagel. will be uh, uh, Chef Jeff and Chef Larry whipping up um, some. Uh, it's going to be a pasta, Italian night. So uh, pasta, meatball, salad. And uh, I think Tom Bavo- I just got a message. Tom Bavak will be opening <laughs> for Steve. He'll be doing 10 right in front of Steve. You, uh, yeah. you also got to a show uh, this weekend, too, uh, at, at Loft. Yes, we do. That's a great point that you brought that up, you know, and I should see if I could get him to to do something tomorrow for you guys. But Joe Maki uh, from Last Comic Standing yeah. is uh, is, is going to be there. Uh, you probably also seen him on America's Got Talent and a bunch of other things. He's one of the funniest guys out there, and he'll be there uh, Saturday night. So awesome. people should go on the website and get their tickets for that. All right, well, All see, right. there you yeah. go. See, comedy's happening. Uh, how do you, but how do you get tickets for tomorrow? Mm. Or you just got to show up at the door? You got it. Well, you can. Uh, if you look at the flyer, if you see the flyer on my yeah. Facebook or your Facebook, or whatever, there's a Venmo code on there. You can Venmo for advance tickets if you want. But I tell everyone to try to get there uh, for when the doors open around seven, so that you make sure you get the seat you want because it is first come first serve as far as seating goes. And you only got a finite number of seats in there. So. We do, and uh, you know. Normally that hasn't been a concern, but now that uh, you know the weather's changing, the Big E's done, all that stuff, and I'm going to be there. And now that you're going to be there, I think we're going to have a, uh, I think we're going to have a packed night. It's going to be a lot of fun. Last week was out of hand fun. It was so damn fun. I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, yeah. you're you're going to have a you're going to have a good time tomorrow night. What's the dress code? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the dress code? Uh, uh, nope, it's Chickaby. So, uh, right. wear, you, even, wear, wear your best t shirt. Yep, yeah. Cover your ankle monitor if you can. Uh, <laughs> that's about it. Yeah, wear your best, wear your best. Yeah. Uh, Usually one must wear a bowling shirt to go to a comedy club in <laughs> Joe Stature. I, I saw some guy walking out of Coles the other day. He had a shirt on that said, A holes live forever. <laughs> <laughs> he's not great wrong. Shirt. No, he's not it's wrong. Great shirt. And I said, Yeah, that's right. And he just kind of looked at me like, Why are you pointing out my shirt? <laughs> <laughs> like you're the jerk, not him no, wearing he, the shirt. No, he is. He's yeah. the one who doesn't want to be bothered. Yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so it's, I'm, that's going to be fun. And then uh, tonight I'll be in Wilbraham at the barn in case. Ooh. Uh, Bax wants to come by. Now, how often is that one that you do? Um, geez, well, Eileen and I, we've been doing that. Uh, Dario, too. We, we were doing that show for about six years, seven years, something like that. It usually runs till about uh, late October, November, and then we usually take a few months off in the winter because the porta potties, we have these, uh, you know, like they have a porta potty, like a Santa can? Yeah. yeah. But we don't have that. She got this trailer. That is like oh, like I've seen those. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? The yeah, yeah, bougie yeah, yeah, yeah. bathrooms. Yep. So it's it's amazing, but the only problem is in the winter time you got to worry about it freezing. Yeah, yeah. You uh, yeah so that's the yeah. only reason why we haven't done them in the winter. Those those things are awesome. Yeah, I, I, I've been I've done so many weddings where people have had those at like those outdoor barn weddings and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah Because yeah. you can't they don't have facilities on the property. Right, they have, right. you have to bring your own. And uh, you feel like you're in like a once you get inside, you feel like you're in a in a regular bat like a big bougie uh, like banquet hall bathroom. It's unbelievably nice. It really is. It's <clears throat> a, one of my favorite things to point out when I go there. But uh, you know, you always <laughs> you got twenty five minutes of material about the bathroom outside. I, I literally probably have that after doing this. <laughs> I mean, we do. They, we I, th- I think she does probably about six shows a year. A year and. The, the proceeds go towards the dog park, yeah. you know, whatever she makes, yeah. you know. So, um, but the uh, well, I promise you this: I'll get out to one of them. I, I won't be able right. to do this week, but yeah, one of these at one point I will get out there. All and, right. And See, now my all my barn people are going to be excited now because they always ask for you. Isn't it funny? Uh, isn't it funny though how like, you you go all you the career you're doing? You're, yeah. you're going to all these different places. You're now like an expert on who has good bathrooms and who doesn't, who has good food, who doesn't. I can you know. tell you, I can tell yeah. you which comedy clubs you, you just stick to the chicken tenders. I can tell you which yeah. comedy clubs. Oh yeah, yeah, and, well, and airports. You start to learn that too, which is weird. That was one of the uh, the things I kind of picked up doing being a wedding DJ all these years. Is like I can tell you where the best place is to have a wedding and the best uh, food is uh, to have. It. What was your favorite food of all the wedding videos? Manili's down in South Windsor. Was Neely's. Yeah, it's a really nice banquet hall facility. They got multiple buildings okay. there, so it's it was oh, it's cool. kind of reminds you like the the original building reminds you of the Chez Joseph. Yeah, like, yeah. It, like it was originally built for that, but then they built this big 
really nice barn in the back yeah. uh, there, and they have all these little different properties, gazebos and things like that. You know, pretty versatile wedding venue, but the food there. Was, was it really their food or, or another caterer? I don't. I, I think it might have been theirs because I didn't. I've never saw like a truck driving up uh, to deliver all this stuff. I believe they were cooking it all right there. But it was. Uh, it was probably the best wedding food. So that here's I've my ever question had. for you. You know this venue. It's yeah. in Connecticut. It's far enough down yeah. that it's away from Western Mass. They got great food. Yeah. Why aren't we doing a dinner show at Manili's? You, you know where it's near. What? Nomads. Remember the oh, place? The, yeah. The, the, that's still, that's a great oh, place. Yeah. Great place. The, they had the uh, open mic. Is that what you're referring yes, to? Yes, yes. They had an there. open mic for years, and that was where the Funny Bone used to go scout their local talent. And uh, a guy, Mike Shustock, who used to do comedy with uh, Nagel and I. You remember Mike? Oh, man. I haven't seen him in years. Yeah, he moved to New York, but then he just stopped doing comedy. <laughs> but he, uh, they had this open mic that was going forever, and the only rule that the guy had was... Uh, you got to be nice to the staff when you're there, you know? And uh, Mike was on stage once, and he got into it with a heckler, and the heckler was like, my uncle owns this place or something like that. And then the the girl behind the bar was like, and she's my best friend or whatever. And he said a word that I could never repeat on air because it's definitely one of the banned right, words right, for the right. FCC. Uh, he called her, and that was the end of that open mic. Oh, that was, that oh, was the end of that. Yeah. See what happens when you when you drop something like that on somebody? <laughs> yeah. well, it only takes yeah. one person to kill comedy. Yeah, it turned out they didn't need the open mic to be successful right. at Nomads. <laughs> turned out yeah, that was it. Yeah. It's 8.58 with Bax and Nagel and Marty Caproni on Rock 102. Would you mind, Rock 102 Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 9.12 and ACDC with Bax and Nagel and Marty Caproni here on Rock 102. It's going to be uh, mostly cloudy today with a high of 69. Giggity. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then uh, could see a chance of a shower this afternoon. Tomorrow, uh, sunny with a high of 68. It's 50 right now in downtown Springfield. You know, I think it bears repeating, uh, and I don't think we can uh, quite say this enough. Uh, tomorrow night, Loft Comedy Club, comedy. I never, wait, what? Yeah. Dinner, what? 20 bucks, and Steve Nagel will what, be there. What's Steve this? Nagel. I've never heard of this before. Yeah, what well, is that? Yeah. I'm glad the message is finally getting through to the listeners. Yeah, it's to the point now where if we mention your name on the air, Everyone. which yeah, sometimes happens, <laughs> someone's going to mention, hey, is there a comedy show on Thursday? <laughs> and what's going on there that night? Yeah, you know, I put it up on Facebook yesterday, <laughs> and there's like four people who said, I never heard of this before. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Well, I love that because they say radio and repetition, right? Yes, that's absolutely. That's how to so, beat into someone's yeah. head. Oh, you've repeated it enough. And it, listen, if the listeners are getting tired of it, what they could do is probably <laughs> tell some of their damn friends, you know, so we don't have to do this every yeah, week. Yeah, right. If you that just tell people yeah. and say, hey, this yeah. goes on every Thursday, we'll never have to talk about it and ever the, again. And the crazy part is when they show up, they go, this was the best night out. Thank you so much. And I go, well, tell your friends. Please tell your friends. And they never do, you know. Well, they tell their friends, but then their friends are like, I don't want to spend $20 on a comedy <laughs> Yeah, <show."> right. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. It's dinner, though. You you spend 20 bucks at Subway if you go to Subway and you get yourself a, 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 a foot long of chips and a, and a drink. And there's no comedy. Isn't it insane how much a trip to a fast food restaurant costs? It's ridiculous. That's I don't really even eat fast it's, food. Anymore. It's like tw- if you get like a meal. Let's just say you yeah. get a meal. You're talking at least $10. At least $10. Oh, my God. It's got to yeah. be. Yeah. Even if you try to do the value menu, a f- still- that is the value menu. Yeah, yeah. a foot long at Subway is like f- some of them are like fourteen dollars though. That's ridiculous. Most of them are like twelve something. Maybe they're almost tripled in price. Yeah, the five dollar foot long is remember, now fifteen. Yeah, I used to say you could tell how the economy was doing by the foot long. When it was a five dollar foot long, you knew it wasn't doing that well because they were like, we need to get people in here. But apparently things are going great because now they're twelve ninety nine, thirteen ninety nine for a foot long. What? Then you get a drink and a bag of chips, you're out the door. It's twenty bucks. Not one joke. Yeah, you know, not right. one joke. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's no there's no opener, no. there's no middle. No, right. <laughs> there's none it. of that stuff. There's none the, of that. The joke is you got duped to eating it subway. <laughs> yeah, there you <laughs> Also, uh, don't forget uh, the Mayflower Marathon Comedy Night. We've talked about that before. It's November 2nd at the Armory at MGM Springfield. Brought to you by Dave Miner Exterior Home Improvements and Aqua Pump. Uh, Marty will be the uh, the headliner along with Brian Plum and Katie Arroyo. It's going to be a great night of comedy. Yeah, they're they're both really, really funny comics, and they're, and they're Western Mass based, and uh, I can't say enough good things about both of them. And then... Obviously, it's going to be fun because it'll be the first time the three of us are somewhere 
live and in person. So yeah, yeah. yeah not uh, separate. Uh, one of us on vacation. Uh, no. Not, you know. And as we always say here, it's the show in between the show. So now if people go to the show there, they, they can might s- actually see the show in between, in between the, show. the show. Yeah, yeah that's, gotta, that'd be, that'd be great. that's what we shoot for. That's what we go for around here. I've got a buddy who says that. I've got a buddy who says that. Speaking of pregnant people. We don't, we don't want to make that. Argument. Steve is on fire yeah. today. He, oh, yeah. He just, made a, he just made a Twitter that says Tom Bavacqua's wig, which is... Uh, uh, yeah. Stop. Yeah. Be nice to Tom Bavacqua. Oh, yeah, be nice be, to you. Uh, yes, <laughs> the, as nice as Tom Bavacqua was to me the day I remember. You know, one bad day. We oh, one bad, bad day. day. It, was, it was like a trend of that. Because he, he, then he'd call every day, go, oh, like I had to deal with this guy again. <laughs> <laughs> he had no way of knowing what you would become. Um, None of us knew no. back then. Yeah, but see, this is what I'm telling you. Never, never be know. mean to somebody because yeah. you never know what's going to happen someday. That's it. All right. Now you tell remember, us. Remember that lady that uh, at the at the open mic uh, that we? Oh uh, yes. Yeah. We shouldn't say her name. No, but. don't say her name. But you can tell everybody. You know, she thought she was great, and she was running all these uh, comedy arts things yes. around the area. Well, actually, it was in one location. But uh, she felt that she was very good and very uh, oh, professional. She was the best. And I went up to her with stars in my eyes because Steve said, "Hey, she's she's pretty accomplished. So you should talk to her." So I didn't know. <laughs> well, so, she wasn't. A, I didn't say that. Yeah, I just but, said she runs a room. I mean, you, you were drinking back then, so yes, who knows what you said. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe, <laughs> maybe she did. Maybe you didn't say it, but Jack Daniels definitely said it. So I went up and uh, and I said to her, "I I love you. I'm new at this. I would love any feedback you give me, any tips or pointers." And she just looked me in the face and she goes, "Yeah, here's one that I think is important." Maybe write some jokes and be funny. Yeah. Right in the gut to uh, a uh, new Marty. That and where is she now? <sighs> I don't I don't even remember the last time I heard from her. That was uh, probably 10 years ago. Yeah, I think she's probably like on an organic farm in Vermont, like making goat soap or something like that. She's <laughs> t- She ain't doing much comedy, I can tell telling you Telling everybody yeah. else they don't know how to make goat soap, and she does. Yeah, she's yeah. the yeah. best. But yeah. I, I thank her, and I thank everyone, because Spite is a great motivator. Who knows? Maybe Tom Pavakul will now be on the Today Show doing uh, doing weather after this. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, I, I think, Spite's a great motivator. I think Tom has moved on. He's doing yeah. other things in his <laughs> life, and then for good reason. He was a nice enough guy. I liked him when yeah. I met him. Steve's He's, the only guy. You're the, of all the people that know Tom Bavacqua, you're like the one guy I know who has one bad thing about to say about the guy. Listen, I'm never telling anybody, you, no you, matter you how many things say about the man, it's a beautiful listen, man. Th- there is somebody out there right now, no matter how many people tell me, yeah, you're great, you're funny, and all that stuff, there's somebody out there that has a really negative story about you and probably you and probably you i mean there's hundreds that have them yeah. about me i don't know about you guys. well let's well, not let's not get crazy here there's a lot more about you than there's about me <laughs> well hey well you know. uh, yeah. do you want to put money on that no, one I, yeah, no, I, listen, I, I definitely don't want to put money on it it's uh 9 18 with Bax and nagel and marty caproni and rock 102 it's another did you know from rock 102 the first automobile in the u.s was made in springfield in 1893 frank durier road tested the vehicle a secondhand carriage with a gasoline engine in springfield in 1896 frank 